Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 23 of Smite Talk. My name is Octane Pro, and tonight I am joined by a new co-host for the Smite Talk show. I'm joined with FG3000. How's it going, buddy? What is going on, Smite Game? It's been a long time. I'm glad to be back. I know, for <laughs> sure, for sure. I had to wake up some people in chat. It was all quiet. I turned off the uh, music. Pop that sucker back on, played our intro music. We are back at it, guys. Those of you guys not familiar, Smite Talk's been on a hiatus here for quite a few weeks now. Um, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure what to do with the show, and uh, it was getting to be quite a burden to go ahead and come up with five hours of content for a show to talk about. Um, and uh, so, decided to kind of revamp things a little bit. So you hired me to That's do all right. the work. That's right. I, I, I pay you with hugs and kisses, so it's all good, bro. It's all good. So, um... You know, those of you guys not familiar with Smite Talk, Smite Talk is a weekly talk show that actually is 45 minutes an hour max, and it's made up of topics that we've come up with, but what it does is it allows you guys to go ahead and call in. So very much so like your typical radio show, you can go ahead and call in, give your opinion on different topics and stuff like that, or create a new topic for yourself. So the raid call information is directly below my image on stream. And all you have to do, download Raid Call, raidcall.com, type in the ID number of 7461039, or just look up Smite Talk in a little search bar at the top, and go ahead and call in. Um, you can adjust your audio settings ahead of time. And what it'll do is when you go ahead and load up Raid Call into that channel, it will allow me um, to go ahead. You're not on the air yet. I can go ahead and talk to you via uh, the chat window. Make sure you have a question, make sure you're set up and good to go. And then I'll throw you on deck. And then when you're on deck, then I'll go ahead and move you into our live call. And, you know, tonight we might not get any callers at all. You'll just, you'll just hear myself and FG3000 talking about a few different smite topics and stuff like that. We might get a few calls here and there. We'll see how it goes for our first night back uh, without a doubt. So uh, you ready to jump in? You ready? Let's do this, bro. All right. What's up, so, mad scientist? I, I got you. you. I got you. <laughs> right? <laughs> Right, exactly. So those of you guys that are interested as well, um, feel free to email the show. If you guys have a topic that you want to talk about, we'll talk about it next week. We're not going to bring it up today. But if there's something that you know, you're really thinking about, you're like, wow, like this would make a really good topic for the show. Um, I want to hear their opinions on it. I want to get some uh, call-ins on it. You know, it's smitetalk at gmail.com. Smitetalk at gmail.com. Feel free to email it. You know, even to say, hey, I don't like your faces. I don't like you on the show. I don't mind. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't mind the criticism. Lay it out. But, you know, you got some good things to talk about. You have some comments or anything like that. Please feel free to email it. Smitetalk at gmail.com. We always appreciate constructive criticism as well. So let's go ahead. You know, I'll throw it over to you first, man. And uh, what do you want to talk about first tonight? Apparently, I need a low resolution camera because they're getting all the details of my glistening on camera here for whatever reason. Um, where, where are you located again? What state are you looking at? I'm in Austin, Texas. So I'm in Austin, is, Texas. It is hot as hell then. Is pretty much it's probably it like 99,000 <laughs> degrees right now. Um, but I'm inside. The AC is on 69 or 68. Okay. 68. All right. <laughs> um, but just real quick, I've only been on Smite Game one time. So there's probably a zillion of you guys that have no idea who I am. Who is this man? Who is so this 50, man? Who is he? And why is he hanging out with Octane? Go for it. Um, tell us, tell us I, about yourself. Used, I used to stream on Tier Monster. Whoa, whoa. I used to stream on Tier Monster um, for about seven months, probably. Um, so a lot of people know, know me from Tier Monster. Also, I'm a YouTuber. I love YouTube. I love Smite. It's the primary game that I focus on. I would post a link, but I'd get slain by Moobot, unfortunately. So uh, I will not post a link to my channel. We'll get you hooked up at the end. How's that sound? We'll get you hooked up at the end. I love it. Um, but I love Smite. <laughs> I've been playing. This is literally the only two games I have installed on my computer right now: are Smite and Wildstar. That's it. It's the only thing I play every day. Ew, Wildstar. Continue. <laughs> Ew, you, dude. Ew, I, you. I like. I, I used to play a ton of MOBAs, and finally, like, I played WoW. I played uh, Star Wars: Old Republic, and I had, I had to give it up. Like, it was, like, Smite's addicting, but like, WoW, Wildstar, you know, Star Wars: Old Republic. Oh my gosh, the addiction is just. Too much. Too much for me. Had to had to say no to that drug. Had to say no to that drug. I still like that drug, and I will continue to use it. But I, I use both of them. I use Wildstar for, like, PvE. Okay. Because PvP and MMOs are not very balanced. Like, if you, if you leave an MMO for, like, a month and you come back, you have all this gear you have to get before you can even become competitive. But in Smite, 
I mean, it's always even. Well, for the most part, it's always even. It's always balanced. So I use Smite for PvP, then I use yeah. um, Wildstar for PV to the E. Oh, okay. Okay. Somebody in chat was asking, you know, Hindu man was asking in chat, you know, how do we, how do we ask questions, stuff like that? So if you go ahead and load up raid call and you get into the channel there, um, in the bottom right hand corner with FG 3000, learn the hard way in the bottom right hand corner, you have an option to do free talk or push to talk, do whatever way you want. Push to talk is set as F2 to start out. Um, and, uh, I will go ahead and send you a message in raid call. So check your messages in raid call, you know, a little window pops up and I'll just check to make sure you're there. Make sure you have your audio settings set up properly. If you return back to me and say in that I am window, yes, I'm ready. My IMs, you know, my audio settings are set. You can go into file preferences and set what your microphone is, what your speakers are. Make sure that kind of stuff set up just like mumble. This is exactly like mumble guys, just like Ventrilo, except, you know, I can move you wherever I want to. So go ahead and, um, you know, get that stuff set up. I'll send you a message as soon as you get in there to check to make sure you're good to go so for example hindu man's right now ready to in the in the lobby um hindu man just make sure your audio settings are set up check the im i sent you within raid call just use your tab window and uh you know just make sure you're good to go before i bring you in so now that we've talked a little bit about fg3000 how to go ahead and call in um what's the first topic you want to talk about tonight uh and kind of get some viewer feedback and stuff like that Wow, I guess we should probably just talk about the patch, get the feels from everybody else. All right. You guys right. talked about the patch pretty hardcore in the last uh, show, but I yeah. want to know what you guys. That's right. That's right. Feel free to call in, guys, uh, and uh, we'll go ahead and bring you in. You know, tell us about the patch, what your thoughts are on the new patch with ROM. You know, do you like the new god? Do you hate the new god? Um, what are some changes that you'd love, some changes you hate? And, uh, you know, feel free to bring up any other topic that you would really like. I mean, I'm really interested in hearing it for sure. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, bring Hindu man in here. We'll see if he's hanging out. Hey, oh boy. hey Hindu man. Welcome to yeah, Smite Talk. Working. How's it wow. going, buddy? How is it going? Well, I just, I, this show is such an awesome idea, Octane. Well, thank you. Like, well, thank you. Holy don't have him. poopsicles. <laughs> well, don't have him this much, is a good please. idea. I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I'm drinking alcohol today, so I've got to be very careful. Yeah. <laughs> folks, folks, this so. is the best type of EU player right here. The one that's drinking alcohol. Why am I not surprised? So, so Hindu man, uh, you know, what do you want to talk about tonight? You can bring up a topic or you can talk I about, give your opinion to... about the patch. Well, FG just gave me one, so I'm going to have to use it. I'm sorry, FG, but Go that was it. like the best excuse to come on. Now. <laughs> all right. All right. So, okay. So you're in a really bad situation. You, Neith, and Nuwa. And, <laughs> and what happens, what happens is Nuwa and Neith step on the edge of a cliff. And the cliff falls away, and they're both hanging on, and they're turning around going, FG, FG3000, save me, please, save me. And they're both saying this at exactly the same time, and the minions of New War are looking at you, like, come on, bruh, my girl's hanging over the edge, give her a hand. And you've got a decision. What do you wow. choose? What do you wow. choose? I guess I gotta go with Nuwa because she she's she has given me the highest win percentage in my smite career. Oh. So I'm sorry, Neith. I have to let Neith fall off the cliff. I have to. Wow. I, hate, I hate that you put me in a situation, <laughs> Hindu man. I hate you. You'll never see the dance again if you do that, though. Oh, I got those recorded. I, I just play them in the background of my second screen. I'm <laughs> never feeling down. It's not the that same. The awesome. old cons are not the same as the live one. Thank you for having me on the show for a very short time. But that was, this is such a great idea. Like seriously, I was like, wow, this is genius. So Hindu man, I have to oh. ask, what do you think about the new god? Ram, huh? Ram is going to be my next legendary. No really? Joke. You're just gonna, he's, yeah. you're just gonna break him out this week and and level him right up. Right, I well, want to do this thing with the fact because I'm called Hindu man. I yeah. want to make it. Yeah, I want a legendary all the Hindu gods, right? However, I can't seem to play any Hindu gods other than Kumbhakarna, so I'm kind of in a tough spot. But at least Ram is here, so that will detract from the attention of the other Hindu gods for the time being and give me an opportunity to get better. But my ELO is now at 1700 ELO. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, check me out. Four oh, months playing. What, you're not playing like Fats where you play with Lassus and you're instantly up there to Platinum, riding that easy I train? I'm, I'm in Bronze 5 still because I can't seem to win a promo game. However, I keep getting matched against Platinums and Golds <laughs> constantly. It's, it's like, well, okay. I'll stick in Bronze and play those games. But yeah, Ram is going to be my next Legendary. I think Ram looks very, very strong. I expect nerfs. I expect big nerfs coming out because that role is oh, very, very strong. No. What do you okay. guys think? I, I, I will I have to goals, say I am pleased that the role is not immune to CC or anything like that. I'm kind of 
I will say I'm kind of surprised he's not just because of the history we've seen uh, with high res in, in that factor and just like uh, adding these new gods and they're just so good and they have such these good disengages. So I'm kind of happy because it's not really a disengage for him. I mean, oh, because the fact that you could still damage him, you could still, you know, I know, CC him halfway through. You can throw a whirlpool in place right away and you're good to go. So I I'm kind of happy about that. FG, what do you think about Rom? You know, do you think... Do you think he's definitely going to go underneath of that nerf hammer, you know, right now before he hits the live servers? I think so. I think his win rate is not going to be spectacular when he first comes out. I think just, just the same point that you just made, his three doesn't give him any CC immunity, so it's more of a repositioning. His ult, people were saying it's OP, but he can't move while he's up there. And the third shot, I think it's going to be a little bit harder than people think to nail that, that last shot. Uh, when you like, when you see the Rama or the Rama, I want to put an A in there. I'm sorry, the Rom. When you see like the Rom reveal on YouTube, Ra, Ra. no one's moving. Like they're just yeah. showing people getting hit by that ultimate. No one's really moving. Yeah. In a real game, it's gonna be a lot harder to hit those abilities. Just to be clear, it's fine to call him Rama as well. The A <laughs> at the end of a Hindu name is a sign of respect. And that's Ooh. why I res have put Kumbakana Bakasura. And now they're starting to realize that the A at the end is just a sign of respect towards those gods. And that's why the A is there. So pronouncing it with the A, you showed respect anyway, FG. You're all good. Don't I worry love about it. it. I, I already knew yeah. that, actually. Yeah, you did. <clears throat> you did. I did not I, know I that. And, and I feel like I learned something new every day with you two. So that is, that is awesome. I, I learned... You I should, you should probably, and I should know this information because I'm Hindu time. man. No, You're... I'm Hindu man. I should know this. <laughs> I should know everything about Hindu, the Hindu gods and the pantheons that are going. To... Yeah, right. The thing about Rama that I see is the fact that he's got the Valkyrie of Klee. He's got Freya's Valkyrie. It's not going to be the easiest thing, but it's going to take him out of combat for up to six seconds, mm. realistically, when you take into account the jump up as well as the jump down again. Yeah. That's a very long time. So it can bait people out into bad situations. On top of that, Roll's got a two-second cripple at max rank. And two-second cripple against another hunter, that could cause a lot of issues. That's, mm. that's what I see on paper. Look at this god. They're the two things that really stand out for me. Yeah. No, I could definitely see that, uh, without a doubt. I mean... His, I like his ultimate becoming a little bit more skill based for sure. Um, you know, as it ends, you know, I like the fact that that circle collapses. That's an interesting mechanic that I'm hoping to see moving forward on some gods as well. So uh, I, I think it'll be good. Um, who do you think if you're looking? And I'll throw this to FG first, and then we'll get Hindu's opinion before we let him go. FG, who do you who do you put uh, who do you put him next to though? Like when you're looking at the other hunters out there, who would you be like? Okay, he is from where you see him now. Where do you put him next to? Like, like who are you like? He is equal to, it seems like, so-and-so. Oh, you mean like another hunter, not yes. who you, you put him next to? Like no, 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 not a lane. Uh, I'll go about okay. another hunter, yep. Um, you know what? I kind of put him in that, um... Hmm. I, that's actually a really good question, because the hunters are probably one of the most balanced classes in the game right now. Mm -hmm. um, when, you yeah. take out, when you take out Shibalanke and you take out Cupid, they're all really, really close. Um, so I think I don't I don't know if you can really make that call right now. I agree. That's that's really tough. The way you've worded it, Octane, is the hardest thing there. Saying which one's he close to? I, I'd say yeah. which one would he have good matchups against? That's how I look at it. And I know for a fact one god that I can see on paper that it'll be great against is Anher. Yeah. Because Anher has. And her has the leap away, and the, the roll and the cripple are going to deal with that one available to him. And when he goes for the Sons of the Fury, where he uses his ultimate. He can jump onto his own ultimate, and that's going to reduce that damage from Manaho as well. So overall, I see that fight is going in favor of Ram on Ooh. paper. However, you know, there's going to be other matchups that I don't think are going to be as favorable to him who can deal with him quite effectively. Neath, for example. I think Neath is going to be a good all-round safe pick against him. Okay. That makes sense. That, that, that's a well, good I mean, call Like he sure. said, like, Try, try to put, trying to compare it to the other hunters is almost impossible, but that's what I like about high is the mix up the hunters. Yeah, I mean, I'm eager to see how the pro players uh, approach it because, as you know, like when a new guy comes out, they can't really touch that, and you know, for a little yeah. while because of the fact of the way that ranked works and also the fact that the rules work within like the high res weeklies. But I'm eager to see once he is available to be played if he will be. So that'll be a good question. And uh, Hindu man, thanks for being our first caller back in today, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Go man. play Kumakara nope. somewhere. No, I saw <laughs> I can't. He's legendary now, FG. He's legendary, boy. Is he oh, nice. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. My first match. Word. Hindu man, thanks My for calling in. You have a good night, man. But before
Before I disappear, FG, give shout, guys in chat, watch FG, tune into his stuff on YouTube. It is really good stuff. I've been watching it for a while on Octane, as usual, every single week on the Smite Update show. And hopefully this one stays around because this is a great idea. I love the idea of it. Yeah. Seriously. Is, yeah, I did, the, I, 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 did, I did the show before you were big, Hindu. I did the show before you were big. <laughs> <laughs> I did big. <laughs> Are we talking about size big or are we talking about in Smite big? I knew you were going to go there. Time. I've hey, been big a long time, my friend. Hey, why, why you gotta always make this, Why is it always about size with you people over in the EU? Come on now. I can't help. <laughs> what do you mean, you people? <laughs> with my, Whoa! With people. What are you trying to say? Who so else is big? Bye, bro. Are you calling Bye. For FG You're big? out. You're out. You're out. Oh. <laughs> That's right, FG. You people. Come on now. <laughs> I'm not that type of person. Anyways, moving forward from there. So, um, you know, talking about the patch a little bit more, we'll go ahead and bring in our next caller here. If you guys are not familiar with how to go ahead and call in, the raid call information is below. Download raid call, type in that code. Once you get into the channel, go to the bottom right hand corner, make the adjustments you need to for your audio. That's very important. Just like, just like Ventrilo, just like uh, everything else like that, and make the adjustments, set it up, and uh, Mon Buddha, who's in the channel, will go ahead, touch base with you, make sure you're good to go before we bring you on the show. So, uh, moving on from there, uh, you know, we're talking a little bit, hey, any last comments about the patch? You know, we talked about the new god, but any, any last things you kind of want to talk about with him? One last thing about Raid Call. Please call in, because right. this gives you, every time you come into a, like, a Smite stream, it's always our opinions. This is like your time to get in front of an audience of people and actually tell what you think. Because our opinions are just as valid as yours. So I want to hear some people talk about this patch. I want to hear them talk about ROM, Hunters, all that good stuff. Oh, um, yeah. But the, other than the patch, um, what's a, a lot of anything too exciting as far for, for me? You know, we talked about it a little bit. We talked a little bit about it on the show, and, and I'd, I'd be eager to hear what you say. You know, uh, F. Dot and I kind of talked about it. What are your thoughts on the uh, UI adjustments that are going to start coming our way in regards to making, you know, making adjustments there with, you know, the floating, you know, adjustments to the UI, the HUD, as those people not familiar with it. You know, what are your thoughts on that? What, what are, you know, you've been, you have a decent amount of gaming background as well. Yeah, I mean, I play. I think I've played Smite too long to care about it at this stage. <laughs> you know, I, I just think I don't really need to move anything at this point. But what I would like to see is kind of what F. Dot touched on before. I would like to be able to minimize some. Like, I don't need the the whole surround of my uh, abilities. I would, if it were up to me, I wouldn't have my face at the bottom, like my character's face. Yeah, I wouldn't have the little overlay stuff. It would just be just the boxes, like just a transparent. Little boxes, bam, 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 all my abilities. That's what I would do. So hopefully we get to that point. I don't really need to move anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people are very particular about that. Like we were talking about with Afton, yeah, how true. he would like to have his four abilities directly under his god. So his focal point is directly in the middle. And it's interesting because when I was looking, when I was playing StarCraft II, uh, it came down to almost mus muscle memory. And I think the same way with Smite is to also throwing your eyes up to where the, the mini map is in the upper right hand corner. You know, it comes down to your muscle memory. Like, like in, in StarCraft 2, it comes down as well. Same thing with Smite is like every so many seconds, it's almost like a habit that you start to make and you train yourself to look at that. Right. Like you very much run into players that are new to Smite, which are so focused on the God in front of them that they don't even look at the mini map to see the gang coming or to see that all of a sudden a word drops down. And stuff like that, being able to move it into the middle of the map or whatever, or make it transparent, whatever you're thinking, um, I think is a cool idea, but also it takes away from the skill set when it comes down to, okay, you know, as you advance and you play the game more, you that muscle memory kicks in so that you can look in the top right corner or you can look at a certain, uh, you know, location. It shouldn't, you know... Part of those things of being able to move everything is yes, it allows it to be more personal to you and you can do whatever you want with it and move it wherever you want. But I'm I'm one of those guys where I'm like, you know, I'm kinda old school. I like the fact that you can't that you can't move certain things and certain things stay classic to the point where, you know, it comes out of that muscle memory as time goes on and playing. What are your thoughts on that, on locking certain things? I mean, does that bother you? Would you rather have it free floating with the UI or would you rather have it locked into place? Yeah, I mean, I don't see an issue with letting it be free-floating, allowing people to move it, but I, I completely agree when it comes to muscle memory. A lot of people have been playing Smite for so long. Um, a pro, a former pro, told me to move my mini-map from, you know how you can move it from the top? Yep. You can move it down a little bit. And I tried to do that, and I just I just couldn't do it. I've been playing with it so long <laughs> that it, my muscle memory always went up, and I was just yeah. missing things. So I, I don't, uh, you know, I think just let people do whatever when it comes to that. Like, let them move it. That's fine. I just, I, it's not a feature, feature that I would ever use. 
Okay. Okay. For sure. We'll go ahead and jump to our, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and bring in our next caller here. Uh, Amari, I guess is the way that we pronounce him. We'll bring him in and just, just Amari J. I know we'll bring him in in just a second. Um, as well on top of that guys, another one of the topics we're going to talk about next after we talk to him is the overall balance of smite. And, and it's a very good topic right now to talk about. Uh, the game's come quite a long way. So I'll be, be eager to get people's opinions, you know, feel free to call in and, and tell us, you know, I don't think this class is balanced or, or I don't think this God is balanced and here's why, but you know, don't just call in and be like, Bacchus isn't balanced because, you know, have some reasoning behind it. Engagements that you might not be balanced in, abilities that you think are too strong. You know, definitely trying to have a pretty good conversation here. So let's go ahead and bring in Amari GA here. And uh, Don't say anything about new law. That's you right. Call in about that's balance. right. <laughs> so, buddy, welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? Amari J, you there? You there? We'll give him a second. Make sure you hit the Oh, yeah. Hello. Hey, Hello. Yeah. there you are. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, going to, on? welcome to the show, man. So, so what do you want to talk about? Yeah. So, okay. So like one of my best friends, like I used to, like, we always play Smite together. Right. So like now he's saying that the Mets getting kind of born to him and like come from Dota where like he says like Smite isn't really that well balanced. And like, I disagree, like compared to like League of Legends where like the same five champions are always played. It's like, I think it's sem semi, somewhat balanced. Okay. Where, where you, like, you, like, I know you guys, you say you was going to talk about this earlier, but you know. That's okay. Go for it. So, yeah. so what do you feel, you know, you talked about other games and stuff like that, you know, being balanced for sure. What aspects do you look at Smite and you say, okay, this is balanced. Like, how do you justify saying it's balanced versus other games? Like how FGT Thrasen said, like, um, like with the Hunter roll, like everyone's the same. You land autos, crit, that's it. Mm -hmm. Now, did you say you, yeah. play, you played Dota a pretty good amount before? No, he does. Like, oh, I, never, he does. I try to play Dota, but like come from Smite, just like, Ugh, so slow dude i went to dota after like i don't know six months of playing smite and i was like i'm just gonna try it out i think it's my number one video on youtube right now because i'm like my title is dota 2 is nothing like smite because of the fact that i go through it i'm like Whoa. i don't under i'm like sensational i'm like i don't understand <laughs> like why do i have to do this what is this click what is this point and click method i don't understand like what is this why, denying why, thing? why why do my why does my ability automatically hit that player that takes no skill i don't understand like so i can i can understand that um and, and you're saying the game is super balanced you know what gods do you usually play the most that you find are super balanced or that you just like to play I'm not saying, like, the game's totally balanced. Like, it's more balanced than, like, other games. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I usually, I main ADC in jungle. So, of course, like, uh, like I normally play Apollo, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, good question. Good thoughts there for yeah. sure. Is there any god that, you know, we're talking about balance? So, Go ahead, FG. What do you got? No, I was just going to just kind of chime in as far as balance. Of, I, I don't think Hyrus gets enough credit on how balanced Smite actually is. Because if you if you get, and I'm not talking like pro player. Well, actually, pro players too. Pro, casual, doesn't matter. You just take a sample size of 100 people. Is that you making all that noise, Octane? Yeah. making so much noise? Yeah, that's me. I fixed it. <laughs> Sorry, I'll fix it. If you take a sample size I was of like 100 my people <laughs> and you ask them who is the most overpowered god in Smite. And I guarantee you, after you take out Scylla, because Scylla is probably a little overpowered, take out Scylla, and everyone's going to have almost a different answer. People are going to say Freya. People are going to say Kubikarna. Yeah. People are going to say Hades. People are going to say Nuwa after the tournament we saw today. And I think that is actually balanced. That's, there's no clear, hey, this is Guan Yu release. Hey, this is Fenrir. He is the like, it's all over the place. And I think that's actually really good. It comes down to, oh, this person just beat in the game, that's why I think they're, and I'm okay with that. Um, the actual numbers don't support that there is one guy that is just clearly better than everybody. Because if that was the case, everyone would think Hades would be overpowered because he's the number one winning god in the game, which I've been saying forever. <laughs> Hades, if you want to win games in conquest normals, I don't know about maybe league, not so much, but in conquest normals, if you want to win games, pick Hades solo. Get your tower down in seven oh, minutes. Rotate gosh. over to mid. Get your other <laughs> tower down. You will win the game. Objectives win the game. Trust me. And that's why Miwa's so good. But I'm not going to talk about Miwa right now. <laughs> yeah. On a relevant note, though. Oh, sorry. No, go for it. Go for it. Please chime in. On a relevant note, though, like when I first came to Smile, I just used to play Hades mid because Sly Fox played him. Then I just used to just, like, I just played it all the way up to level 30. I have a legendary from there. Hmm. That's pretty sweet. So, is that how you found Smite originally? Yeah, exactly. Is that how you got? You uh, know, yeah. Huh. Interesting. That's awesome. I mean, I think I think that the creatures crew there is is pretty 
pretty um you know helpful to the scene to be bringing in you know some new audiences for sure uh but yeah i mean i feel right now with balance talking about balance is you know i've been i've, I've been around for a while you know uh, two years give or take and uh, i feel like smite is at one of its best points when it comes down to balance right now like just like fg3000 was saying when you're looking at the picks and bans there's no one right now where you're like they are so overpowered like we have to ban them out instantly now granted there are priority picks and there are gods that are better in certain roles that's always going to be the place case there's always going to be as we talked about in the smite update you know kumakarna and same thing with like um you know other gods in there that like geb who are better in a role but they're not astronomically better where everybody's complaining after a team flight oh they're so overpowered they just melted everyone like like, I'm really happy actually with where we're at right now and it's taken high res a long time to get here but I think they're doing a really good job with it and I feel like the god pool has assisted with that how many gods you that are available now so it's pretty sweet uh any last let's touches not, let's not forget about let's not forget about one other thing respect bands respect yeah. bands exist in smite like who who bans Loki right <laughs> but if Lassus is playing Loki you ban Loki or if Sun if Sun Touch can get Freya, you ban Freya. In other games, you don't even ban. Like, how many times does Freya get banned when it's not Sun Touch on the other side? Yeah. Right. So that's why Smite <laughs> yeah. is really, really well balanced, and I, I hopefully people start to realize that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The worst the, the worst thing, and it kind of bothers me when I'm when I'm playing. Like I do all I do is viewer games. Like I don't do ranked because I enjoy spending my time playing with viewers on stream. But the thing that drives me nuts is when I see like a player do really well. And then, like, the lobby afterwards, they're like, oh, Freya's OP. Just because... Nemesis is easy. Just, <laughs> just, because the, <laughs> just because the player did excellent and performed really, really well on that god does not mean that they're overpowered. That just means they're good with the god. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you know, it doesn't make them overpowered, so... Uh, any last comments that you have uh, for uh, being uh, just balanced and everything like that, man? Oh, yeah, like, earlier today, like, I was playing with an Arachne and ranked, so I was like... Oh my god, not Arachne. Then like she actually did pretty well. Like she actually didn't didn't feed like how I expected it and tried to predict. I was like, yeah. I was like, There's two types no. of Arachne. There is an Arachne that goes twelve and zero, and then the Arachne that goes two and sixteen. <laughs> Yep. That's that's it. There's no in between arachnes. Yep. <laughs> the worst. I feel so bad when I see an arachne in assault too, and I'm like, oh, I feel so bad for you. I feel so bad for you. This map is not designed for a god like you at all. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, move on thank you very much for calling in man i do appreciate it and uh, hopefully you call yeah, in on future you. shows thank you yeah. later so uh overall balance you know um you know if i was to ask you fg you know what gods you th what what t what god do you think is the most balanced in the game where you're like he's perfect where he's at who would you say neath. neath why does it have to be a man why can't it be neath <laughs> man this guy neath unbelievable is phenomenal okay. when's the last time neath has been touched you don't touch no, neath she's no, awesome no i think Neath's in but, a good place but look where neath is on and i'll bring it up competitive level you don't really see neath too often now granted that's probably because there's better gods to be played as hunters without a doubt well neath fell off because they lowered the amount of gold you get from early kills okay. so neath was fantastic when you could just pick off people with their ultimate early yeah. game, get ahead, and then you just snowballed and destroyed everybody. So now those kills aren't worth as much. Yeah. And she kind of fell off a little bit, but I still think she's a really good pick. And you saw her, you saw her get a comeback with Uller and yeah. I, I love her. You know, you're not going to get me to say anything different. I don't know why we're even talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then, and then of course, like New Wa. I think New Wa is going to be a topic of discussion just based off of the snipe victory over uh, Dignitas. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. She's she's very I, I I feel like she's balanced because she is really easy to shut down. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you just let her sit in a lane by herself, she's going to she's gonna fog, she's gonna sprint, she's gonna uh, minion a tower, flame strike a tower. It's gonna be down before you can even react. It's gonna be really, really difficult to tweak New Wild without taking away her ability to push, which is yep. the only thing she really has. That's what she has going for her, without a doubt. I mean, her push ability is so good, but just like we kind of talked about, like melting down a Phoenix in four seconds, like, wow, that's really, really good with her set of- That's uh... really all she has. That's <laughs> really all she has. And, and I, I, we're not talking about New Wild, but I'm gonna talk about New Wild. The, the only thing that New Wild's good at is objectives, but coincidentally, Winning smite means you win objectives. Yeah. This is why Nuwa is good. She can get objectives down, which means you win the game. So yeah. I love her. I love her. 
Yeah, without a doubt, for sure. Let's go ahead and bring in our next caller here, uh, Ty. Ty will bring you in in just a second. Uh, another thing we'll talk about here is uh, something that was FG brought up for sure, which I think is an interesting topic. And these are the type of topics I love to talk about. University now offers League of Legends scholarship. Um, so we're going to be talking about that in just a few minutes here. Uh, if you have any other comments about the patch, about the overall balance, or you just have a comment or question about anything, you know, anything related to Smite, good, bad, and ugly, feel free to go ahead and call in. Uh, we have a few people on deck right now getting in here. So let's go ahead and bring in Ty. Ty, welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? We'll see if he notices. All right. Hey, there you are. Awesome. So yo, yo. Uh, what do you want to talk about tonight? Um... One of the things I probably want to talk about is uh, DMing. Okay, go for it. Um, so I, I've been trying to get some. Uh, sorry, hold on. No, take your time. Go oh, there's it. there's a delay. Okay, okay, that's confusing. <laughs> yes, mute the mic, mute the or mute the stream. Yeah, the stream. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Um, yeah, no. Uh, um, I've been trying to get uh, some friends to play, and um, well, they, they started playing, but they mentioned to me how bad the DMing was, and mm -hmm. I'm like. Is it really that bad? But I just came back from like, like I left Smite for like three weeks just because it, it got so bad. Like it got to the point where people would absolutely refuse to play. They'd be like, oh, you're retarded. Uninstall the game. F6 at the Eminem Yeah. It's like they're not even trying. I'm like, this is casual, by the way. Yep. This isn't okay. even ranked. Yeah. And um, is there anything that can really be implemented to, to try and bring this down? One of them mentioned um league implemented this this weird system i don't know i don't play league i don't play dota yeah yeah smite's the only mobile i've ever played so i just wanted to know what your opinions were on it should they remove chat to begin with like what what, what do you think about it i'll throw it to fc so, first go for it man so league of legends has a karma system and i actually brought this up to hire us chris a couple of times and he he knows that it's it's needed it's not on the radar anytime soon so don't go and tell people fg3000 said this is coming tomorrow um but he agreed that it's something that we need so at the end of the game you can tell you can tell um, you can tell high res that someone did poorly by reporting them harassment and and, yeah. and they left the game at AFK. But you can't report anybody for doing well. You can't report anybody for being a really good leader, making great calls. So we need to have that first and foremost because what that does is it gives people an artificial number, kind of like you know, um, back in the days. I've been playing video games a long time. Back in the, day, <laughs> back in the back days, back in my day, like, back in my days. When Xbox went like the original Xbox, there was no such things of a, as a, achievements back then, right? Xbox added achievements. People just want to get achievements, right? Why would you play a game, like, let's just say a shooter game, and you collect sparkles? Those sparkles didn't do anything, but people yep. wanted to collect sparkles. Or so the stars you, in Mario. Yep. Yeah, like <laughs> just, just to collect them, just yep. to collect them. That's the only reason why. So if you yep. put a positive karma system in the game, it'll, it will make people want to collect positive karma points. Yeah points which will make them not it doesn't matter if they're bming you in real life but as long as they don't actually type it as long as they don't actually say it i think it's really really good so until we get a positive karma system i just don't see bming or tox being toxic i don't see it going away until that happens yeah i i'm so glad you brought up the karma system because that was exactly the route i was going to go they actually talked about a karma system a while ago um i forget where it was it was somewhere on the high-risk stream, without a doubt, and it was Bart or someone, and, and I don't want to go ahead and say, oh, Bart talked about it specifically, but it was somewhere in somewhere in that group it was talked about, a karma system, and I think it's a phenomenal job, and I'm kind of, you know, they're starting to look, high Rise is starting to look at BM and trolling in bad manner, and they don't want new players to be turned away from it, so they're starting to look at manners in order to... to adjust certain things in the game to help focus on it. For example, the random lobby setup that they did. That was to help combat yeah. in the fact of, oh, I'm on top, I'm in charge, person on the bottom, you have no choice, you're playing support, whatever. So it's a step in the right direction. The karma system, I think, is an excellent point. And to talk a little bit more, FG talked about, I would love to see a system where at the end of the game, you have a few options. You know, give this person, let's say you could only hand out so many karma points a day. You know, you get to pick and choose who you give good karma to and pick and choose how much negative karma you give to someone. If I'm in game and I have to see this player, FG3000, who is, you know, after the, right, right before the 10, right before the 10 minute mark, he's being rude. He's saying F6ing. He's, you know, talking down upon a new player just starting. I want to be able to, when that game ends, to say, I want to give FG3000 negative one karma point. And what that does is if a player, let's say, accumulates X amount of negative karma per day or per week, they get banned for a certain amount of time. Just like the deserter part. Ban them for four hours if they get 
five pieces or four things of bad karma. So to me, if they went into a game and talked trash or was horrible to everybody, and the other four players in that game all gave him negative karma, ban him for four hours. And then you kind of have that right. But the positive side of it is, let's say FG3000 is awesome, great guy, very, very this sounds more likely. Not only does he perform well, but let's say he does great when it comes down to organization, he's helpful, whatever. Give him positive karma. You can elect it to him. Then what can happen Go is after, <laughs> after FG3000 goes ahead and collects so much positive karma, that can go ahead and be converted into gems. Right there. Whoa. Yeah. So Whoa, gems. That will that, Yeah, exactly. It may be a low amount of gems, and it'll take some time to collect it, but look at that. The reward. You reward him for being a good player, but you can also... You know, it doesn't have to be good and bad. You can have a few different choices. Someone who's most helpful. Someone who's MVP of the game. Someone who was rude in the game. Whatever. Do different do different kind of questionnaire thing, and you get to pick and choose it. I don't know. An idea. I think I really, really like it, and I don't know. What are your thoughts on the karma system uh, there, Ty? What do you, you know? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? What do you think? Oh no no! I I love the karma system. Thought they would be uh absolutely great. Now, do you think they would get they would lose gems if they were that bad? If they'd go into negative gems. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't. I would. I don't. I don't know that I would do um you know losing gems. Um you know I don't know that I would do that specifically. I feel like that would be losing gems would be taking money away from players that paid for it. Or like or or creating like a separate currency or something something that's away from the gems it's an idea but i mean i personally feel like there's two different types of currency in the game right now and to go ahead and develop another one i think would be kind of rough um i don't know that's just my personal opinion i feel like taking away the gems is rough i think forcing the ban on them just like the deserter mode i think is a step in the right direction what do you think fg you know maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong what do you think about what i talked about and his question as well uh, I don't know about gems, but a f favor. I mean, we already have goodwill, right? So yeah. there is a system in place. It just needs to be more noticeable. Like, does anyone well, really care that you're well, getting is, a little bonus from goodwill? Yeah. Well, what does the money even do, though? Like, really, what what does it do? Like, I mean, I guess you can you can buy gods, but that that's really it. Uh, yeah. Oh no. well, yeah, yeah. I mean, gold skins and, and recolors, and I mean they're kind of expensive. You can, yeah. You, 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 can't even buy much. I mean, I've already bought the uh, the god pack. So I'm mean, like, what else do I spend the money on? So you're saying rewarding people with favor isn't going to change behavior because no one really cares about favor. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I guess it really no, depends. Not... I mean, from, from my perspective, I've I've already I bought all the gods, so I don't care so much about favor. So like rewarding me with more favor wouldn't do very much because there's not much to spend it on the game. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Gems. I would but. Gems. Or another really cool thing, since we now have ward skins, like if there was a leadership ward skin that you we could only get if you had a thousand karma points, and you could lose that skin if you fell under nine hundred, you know, nine hundred ninety-nine. Sorry, you can't use your leadership ward skin, or you know, your icons in your car, things like that. I think people will always try to shoot for. So. Side note, side note. Uh, we, we have to have that karma system. Man. Yeah. Side note. Shout outs to Bas yeah. Bas Cures All, uh, for. Uh... Going ahead and subscribing in chat. Thank you, sir. Thanks for scar subscribing. What a mess. That's right. Shout out to you, sir. So, uh, any last comments on on you know what we can do to combat in this? Because I feel like right now, like the karma system was a great idea for them to go ahead and bring up, and I feel like moving forward, like let's see it implemented. Like let's see it happen. Um, I think it could benefit it. I think it's the next level of combating the bad manner trolling that exactly what you said there, Ty, you know, it turns you off. It, it, it made you feel that you want to go ahead and go elsewhere. And, you know, Smite is definitely not like that. And I hate the fact that certain people can go ahead and destroy a game for someone like yourself because of that. So any last comments on that? Uh, no, no, a hundred percent. I'd be happy seeing the karma system. I mean, there isn't really any other game that I can go to because this is the only game where I move my WASD keys. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and I love it. Love it. All the games are so fast. FPS shooter for the win. Way better. That's right. Yeah. yeah That's love it. right. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for calling in, and we look forward to hearing from you in the future. And uh, yeah, yeah. just for being such a good sport, I am going to go ahead and send you a 200 gem code over. Uh, what? <laughs> over, oh, so, so check your raid call. Um, there's different IM system in raid call. And I just sent you a gem code. And if you have any issues with it, please make sure you just send a Twitter message my way or anything in order so I can get that figured out for you. But there you go. Enjoy, sir. All right. Man, I want to voice back. All right. Thanks, Ty. <laughs> have a good night. Yeah, you too.
Alrighty. Awesome. Awesome. That's a, that's a good conversation to have about the karma system for sure. Um, you know, it's always, I just want to bring up the fact that, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, brother. No, go for it. Roll it. Interrupt. No, me my, no, my interruption was actually rude because it has nothing to do with the topic. I just <laughs> want to say that the chat isn't subscriber only and I can't talk now. <laughs> that's right. So it's because there was, uh, <laughs> either, either, either chat got out of hand or chat got botted and it kept saying fat, 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 fat. So I had to no Lassus started that. Lassus, Lassus started that. Lassus, I hate you, bro. You owe me two tequila shots at the next land because of that, sir. You owe me, bro. Octane doesn't want to drink tequila. Just get him. Uh, yo, something so a, so a I will I will tell that, you about please. this. I will tell you how much how ballsy these boys are. So Dignitas shows up at the hotel lobby at the launch event. And you know, they've had a long day of travel, they want to drink, so they're like, let's go to the bar. So there was a bunch of us there, went to the bar. First thing they do. Bartender, I need five shots of tequila. First thing they do. I'm like, wow, these guys don't joke around. You know, not only are they good at smite, but they also know how to drink. So shout out to you, Lasses. Yes. So, um, you know, moving forward from there, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about a university now offers uh, League of Legends scholarships. Uh, tell us a little bit about this. This was a topic you wanted to go ahead and bring up. I love this topic. And I love the fact that it's so polarizing. This is absolutely fantastic. So there is a university, I believe it's in Illinois. I believe I forgot which states, <laughs> sorry. Um, but now they are offering a League of Legends scholarship. So if you don't really understand what that means. So I was reading IGN comments and I almost had an aneurysm because a lot of people don't know what a scholarship is. A scholarship is giving money to a person to help pay for college. Right. So this is not a class. It's not like a League of Legends class. Mm -hmm. um, if you're really, really good at basketball, for example, a, a, a college will give you money to come to their school and get your normal education. So you can still get a degree in physics or or G you can be a math teacher, whatever you want to do. You can still go do that. But if you're a really good League of Legends player, they will pay for your school to or you pay for your uh, your tuition to uh, come to their school. Um, I actually think it's really fantastic because we're getting to the point now where Esports is going to be just as big as going to a basketball game or going to a football game. It's going to be the next big thing. I think right now you have like Team Dignitas, you have Team Solo Mid. Maybe in like five years, you have Team University of Texas. Yeah. Going against Team, uh, you know what I mean? Like maybe you get to that point. I think that's actually pretty awesome. Um, a lot of people are kind of shooting down the idea because it's based off of video games. Yeah. But at the same time, you can get a chess scholarship. You can get a water polo scholarship. You can get a, a scholarship for being black or Native American. You can get a scholarship for oh, yeah. being smart as well. So I think just getting more people into school is just just awesome. I'm, I'm um, interested. I I what, what do you to, think about that? I'd, I'd love to see some of the parameters behind it, to be honest with you, regards to like some scholarships, as you said, you know, for example, like you can get a scholarship for, you know, being Native American or something like that. And, you know, you just have to, to show, um, you know, proof of it in, in certain, you know, ancestral ways. And then, you know, you get it and you're good to go. You're at the school. Nothing's asked of you. But with a League of Legends scholarship, I wonder if it has to do with that, like a player level. Like you have to go, you have to compete at so many, just like a regular sport. You have to compete in it. You have to show proof of competing, well, yeah. stuff like that. So I'm, I want, I'm eager to see once those are released, some of the parameters behind it, because I think it's awesome. Like, I think it's a step in the right direction. I think this goes hand in hand with like the X games and how well call of duty has done there. I read some stats the other day, how call of duty, um, the MLG event at the X games was the most viewed event in history for the X games. <laughs> like, wow. holy crap. Like way to go, way to go. Like, video game hobbyist and enthusiast like that is awesome going ahead supporting it, it it makes a huge difference because guess what when the x games goes ahead and considers something for next year guess what they're going to go ahead and put at the top of that list whatever gave them Call the of most, duty whatever gave them the most viewership whatever gave them the most advertising now putting that side by side i feel the x games and this scholarship thing with league of legends is a great step in the next direction i think it's an excellent step um, so I'm really looking forward to, you know, how that works out. Um, let's go ahead and take our next caller here. How would you pronounce that? Sid Hartha? Harda? Harda? Sid Harda? Yes. All right. Go for it. 87. That's right. We're going to go ahead and bring them in here in just a second. So one moment here. And uh, Sid, welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? Thank you. I uh, appreciate being on. No problem. Yeah, it's uh, Sid Hartha. It's based on a book. Okay. Um, 
Uh, just uh, a comment on what you guys are just talking about about the the scholarships for uh, for gaming. Go I mean, ten, ten, 10 years ago, people would say you know getting paid for for gaming that's crazy, but uh, it's just it's just the way things are going. The gaming industry has blown up in the uh, in the last ten years, and uh, the way things are going, I think. Yeah, for sure. I but, mean, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yep, keep going. Yeah, but uh, my, my my question is is about the warrior class uh, Go for in it. Smite. I I love warriors. Uh, you know, I have a legendary oh, sorry, Odin, buddy. legendary Guan, and uh, I feel like I've I've noticed recently uh, everybody seems to be playing and building warriors uh, like assassins, um, and uh, I always tend to build them hybrid because I feel like that's the way that they were designed to be played. Um, but you know, perfect example of this is is Osiris. I see everybody playing Osiris like an mm -hmm. assassin, uh, and I wanted to get your guys' thoughts about that. Uh, is this just the way things are going? Is this the new meta? Is is it ever going to go back to hybrid builds, or uh, you know, is high res going to do anything to to change it? I know they did the nerf recently uh, to warriors to kind of degrade their offensive potential, uh, but uh, it doesn't seem to have done. Sure. Well, well, first. I, I... I understand your definition of uh, hybrid first, because yeah. if I play a warrior, pretty much my third item is most likely going to be a defensive item. I don't know if you consider that now I'm a hybrid now. Like, <laughs> what's your actual definition? Well, you know, items like, um, you know, the the shields, uh, items that are going to give you uh, uh, offensive and defensive uh, characteristics, you know, still having some type of uh, defensive ability. Um, but like you know, like I said, I see Osiris, and they're not building any defensive items. They're just going full offense. They're you know they're building the same kind of items that you'd see a Bakasura or a Loki building. Mm. Um, and I and I think they're doing that because they're seeing a lot of success with it. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on on how the warrior class fits in to Smite. Uh, you know, is it is our warriors going to get phased out uh, if this kind of thing continues? Sure. Well, I, I think Osiris kind of skated past that whole warrior nerf. <laughs> like, cause he, since he was so new, yeah. he really he actually got a, he got a he got a buff during that time, right? He, he got CC immunity on his ultimate. Yep. Wasn't it, I don't know if that was the same exact patch, but he kind of skated by those nerfs. So I don't know if using Osiris is the best example, but if you look at some of the other warriors like Vamana or or you know uh, Odin or any of those other warriors. Um, I, I think they all, as, as far as what I've seen, they've all pretty much transitioned to just going one or two, um, one or two offensive items and all the rest of defense for the most part. That's what I've seen personally. Um, and I think that's what Hyrus kind of wanted, just a little, but it's not fun, I don't think. I, I don't think people are actually, I don't think they like that change for the most part because we've seen a lot less warriors in games um, because you, you're either a really crappy tank now or you're an average DPSer. And I, I don't know if it fits just yet. And I think you're right. They're going to continue to keep looking at it because Osiris is kind of like the only warrior you see in, in, in competitive right now. Like it's just Osiris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. when I going ahead and looking back like a year ago, I think it was high res put out an email like they do with surveys. And one of the and this was a really interesting survey they put out. It was very much what because then a little bit over a year ago, maybe even longer, like a, almost a year and a half ago, it was, how do you feel about gods being hybrid gods? You know, you like it, don't like it. And then very much so, it was very much questioned in regards to, do you feel each god should have one role and one role only? And so he went ahead and talked about that as well. In re, you know, in regards to, you know, should Ymir, or, or let's say Odin, good example, should Odin only be able to play Guardian style, or should Odin also be able to kind of hybrid it, as you kind of talked about? And, you know, talking about that a little bit more, um, you know, we, t we talked about the fact of, you know, and it came up, you know, hybrid versus not hybrid. And high res was really wondering, you know, what direction they take it. Because there was a huge demand for being hybrid, gods playing hybrid and stuff like that. But at the same time, like, when I was playing the game then, I would play like a Ra or Ymir or something like that. And I would want... I liked looking back originally, I didn't like it then, but looking back a while ago, um, you know, it was really nice to have individual roles. That has completely changed and gone away. And the hybrid role became a huge, huge popularity thing, was really, really good. Um, you know, hy hybrid has been around for a while, but I feel like that hybrid mode kind of came back to bite high res in the butt because of the fact that then they had to go ahead and go, wow, look at the way the game has progressed. We have to go ahead and alter the way that hybrids can exist because of the fact that Guardians are now not being played as often. So 
you know, it's kind of gone back and forth for sure. Where I'm at now is I like exactly where the game is now. Where it's the age of Guardians where it used to be back in the day. And Warriors are very situational. Just my thoughts. FG, you still right. with us? You still with us? I knocked my webcam off. Of yeah, my I'm computer. like, I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> I'm watching it. I'm like, really? And chat's like, oh my gosh, motion sickness. Here it comes. Here it comes. I, I've seen, I've seen people uh, talking about, uh, you know, doing the same thing with Osiris that they did for Nemesis and yeah. uh, reclassing, reclassing him as, uh, and as, as an assassin. What do you guys think about that? I personally like it. What do you think, FG? I think uh, when Osiris first came out, I, I pretty much pegged him as like the next nemesis he's like a god that's made to yep oh it looks like he's breaking up a little bit fg you're like breaking up oh i think he's stunned now too fg close out of your raid call and then come completely back in because your webcam's frozen too bro i don't know what you do with your webcam anyways you still with me there yeah all right cool cool for sure for sure so uh any last thoughts there on uh just the uh the you know in regards to hybrid well i'll say this i stick to you like to glue on to you he's he's exactly like nemesis uh, the new item the new item that they're they're coming out with i think that is a a perfect item to help kind of bring back the the hybrid build because if on a warrior it's just it's a fantastic item to have yeah um so i i I like that i mean i think that's a step in the right direction for me because i you know i like building hybrid i like being tanky but still being able to dish out enough damage to secure a kill when i need to for my team yeah no that's a good point that's a good point no i completely agree with that for sure um well fg yeah fg go ahead and close out your raid call um and then uh kill your camera on uh go to meeting and then turn it back on and hopefully that'll get you all good to go from there so any last thoughts there at all sid that you want to chime in on or any other topics um you know i can't think of anything at the moment unfortunately i wish i could all right man it's well, been it's been nice talking to you guys i appreciate it yeah no problem man uh please feel free to call in, in the future that'd be awesome yeah sure thing see ya all righty so we'll allow fg to get his stuff figured out fg it looks like your uh your camera is good to go now so uh your camera's good uh, how's your audio you still good to uh, wait for you to get back in raid call it looks like you're not quite back in raid call yet, so we'll give it a minute here. Allow him to jump back in. It looks like his camera's working, though. So uh, we can see his beautiful face right now, so we'll wait for him to get back in. In the meantime, if you guys have any other comments about University now offering League of Legends scholarships, uh, overbalance of Smite, uh, you know, uh, let me see here. I'll go ahead and send you a message and go to meeting. All right. Uh, anyways, I sent you a message there and go to meetings. So just check that there um, and we'll wait to see. Okay, let's see. He's back in here. Hello, sir. Are you still alive? You're still hanging in there? Computers are so hard. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry>. <laughs> Computers <laughs> are hard. So you good to go now? You surviving? Yeah, I think we're good. I think All we're right. good. All right, cool, cool. So, um, you know, talking, you know, uh, let's go ahead. We have another caller here. Make the babies. Make the babies. We're going to go ahead and... Making the babies, Octane. Oh. Making the babies. Uh, I'm kind of scared because his picture is like this young child, like this young kid. So I'm really scared if he's like a real young kid with that title. But let's go ahead and bring him in. Making the babies. How's it going, man? Oh, what's up? Hey, hey, interesting, yo, yo. interesting name, interesting picture for raid call. We'll just put it that way. It's yeah, it's always been that name. It's, <laughs> I don't know, it's just a thing. So, what do you want to talk about tonight? All right, it's the matchmaking. All right, me and my friend, my best friend, we've been playing for almost a year now. Awesome. Love the game. Play it. I don't know how many hours I put into this. More than counter strike and all that wouldn't you love you know? to be able to see that by the way where you could go somewhere and do <laughs> yeah, like slash I've played been, slash played I like told wow. my friend that i've been like they need to put slash time played in that'd the awesome. thing that'd be awesome but so, uh like lately it's just been awful we've been getting with people who don't know what they're doing just i feel like I can't play this game anymore just because, mm -hmm. like, there's a bunch of noobs. I don't know if they're playing with, like, a friend or they're by themselves. Like, I used to – I'm not going to lie. I used to be awful. And now, you know, I've gotten really good. I know what I'm doing. And um, I, I just – I can't – I don't understand what people are going through nowadays. Just, they're just running into battle – I don't know. I'm just – I'm really hyper right now. No, oh, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> FG, what do you think about this? Uh, matchmaking. This is like a this is like the most popular topic in, in all of Smite, yep. isn't it? Yep, pretty um, much. Pretty much. 
but there, there are certain factors that prevent smite matchmaking to go to the next level right because we have <laughs> standardized queue times mm -hmm. so and if, if, if people don't understand what that means is that when you go into conquest it'll tell you that in two minutes you are guaranteed to get into a game in two minutes if you press this button but at the yeah. end of that two minutes let's say that there's only a few people that are near your skill level too bad two minutes you're in and yeah. smite is just going to match make you with those people that's yeah. not really the fault of the matchmaking it's kind of the the, the, the con of having rolling cues. The yeah. pros of having rolling cues is that, oh, 10 seconds, I can jump in and assault real quick. Oh, 30 seconds, let me just do a siege real quick. So those are the pros, but the cons are, if there is nobody near your skill level, high res is still going to match you with whoever they can in that section. Um, also, parties, right? Parties is probably one of the biggest um, factors when it comes to poor matchmaking, right? Yeah. If I'm level 30 and I have my best friend and I want to play with him and he's level 10, there is just, there's no real place to put us. There's yeah, just, it's, because it's gonna be they no go where you put us. Yeah, they go ahead and mm -hmm. take the average of your like MMR rating, and then that's the MMR rating they apply, which is a shame because all this that could still be a decent MMR rating depending on who you're playing with. And then all of a sudden, like you get into a game and you got a level ten who's getting reamed out because he's not performing at the level that everyone else is expecting. Yeah, yeah. And and speaking of levels, like let's say I level up in smite and the only thing i ever played was hunter but now i'm level 30 and i now i want to do jungle yeah so i'm actually level 30 but i've never played jungle before so people are going to say oh that's bad matchmaking when really i might be really good i just don't know how to jungle yeah yeah no. yeah. yeah so there's a lot of factors into it i don't know if they're hmm Oh, so you have an issue i, I don't even there. really know how you fix it to be honest with you maybe yeah. I, I, i've heard them talking about getting rid of real yeah which will help a little bit, but you're still gonna have problems with parties. You're still gonna have problems with with yeah. people that don't know how to play new characters. Yeah, I, I know. Go ahead. Oh, go for it. No, uh, well, sorry. I know. Like uh, a while back, a couple months, well, probably around December, to January, my friend, like when I wasn't home or something, he'd play by himself and he would just lose games after games because of his team. And I tell him, I don't know what's your problem. I'm always winning games by myself, and like he's my bad luck charm. That's what I always tell him, but. <laughs> He's the reason why I lose a lot. That's I mean, no, he's he's really good. You know, he's play he played Dota yeah. years ago. He he knew what he was talking about. He trained me. You know, I'm Yeah. And I've been playing with a bunch of people, I feel like they don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're like with parties or not with parties. People don't know aren't training them well. I mean I know I understand what y'all are saying, yeah, but just sometimes it's crazy. Yeah, high res, high res like Chris it. was on the Smite update the other the other week, two weeks ago, and um, he briefly brought up the fact that they're actually going to be looking at some point here removing the, as FG3000 had talked about, removing the timers. And so I'm interested mm. to see how that works out if, like, you know, we go ahead and join in and, you know, it. and when they remove timers, I don't believe that they're going to be like, oh, you queue up and you instantly get in. Your timer, you know, instead of waiting your typical like three minutes per se or four minutes, you could wait 10 minutes. That mm -hmm. that timer removal may go ahead and allow for better matchmaking. But the downside is, is then you're going to be waiting longer. So if we start to see more and more players complain about that, they might go ahead and implement it back in the game. Reason being is just because of the sheer fact that, you know, hey, you wait longer, but you get a better game with closer matchmaking values, or you don't wait as long, but then you're all over the place. So it's kind of a, it's a lose-lose situation for high res because you're going to make yeah. some people happy and some people are going to rage. Yeah. Yep. It is a lose-lose. And then once again, people like myself that I don't really main arena and I don't really main siege, but if it's 10 seconds, I'll jump in. Yeah. yeah. But if I have to wait 10 minutes to play arena... I'm not going to play Arena. I'm just going to yeah. play Conquest. Well, and that's the thing. You might not know how long you're going to be waiting. Like, it could be a while. You know, you don't really know. What I'd like to see, though, is if they remove it, I want to see a little timer that says next to it, average wait time. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I've yeah, seen yeah. games I've seen games where they do that, so you know, wow, like, there isn't a lot of people playing this right now. Here's what the average time is, give or take. That would be kind of nice to see. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what is that? Rainy 1597 talks about if you can have a, you can spectate other live games is exactly what Dota 2 does. So if you've never played Dota 2, while you're waiting in queue, it could be four or five minutes, you can actually watch other live games going on right then. 
And then as soon as your cube pops, you pop up, pop on over to your own game. What if it auto? That what if it? Awesome. What if it auto put you into a game? So like you don't have a choice of what game it is, which would be kind of nice. You just get to pop into a random game, random game mode. It's kind of like a commercial until you actually get into your game, you know. Uh, and then you got you you just to get to view it. I think that'd be an awesome idea. Like. I think that'd be great. I don't know if the spectator client can support it, but the nice thing is like, because of the <laughs> fact, because I don't know what the number is of how many spectators you can actually have before there's a problem, but because of the fact that it could randomize it, you could just be put into a random game. And if, you know, yeah, that would, that would allow, work. that would allow it to load balance properly. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. And then it pops up and tells you your queue is available and you, it automatically moves you or that your game is available and it pops you into the game. I think that'd be great. Yeah. So now, if some people don't want to do that, I think it should give you an option, you know, because that, let's say you want to hang out and chat with people, or you want to do buy some gems or whatever. I think that would be an yeah. option too. So I think it'd be two options, you know, jump. You know, what yeah. I mean? that'd be kind of nice. That'd be kind of yeah, nice yeah, yeah. for sure. Good Octane, deal. You just said something that just triggered something out of my brain. What do you got? <laughs> random. What do you got? You just said random. And if anybody's played World of Warcraft. There is oh, a thing yeah. called Random Battlegrounds mm -hmm. that basically Blizzard implemented so they can kind of spread the population out. So you got you got more PvP valor if you hit random as if you just queued up for just one roll. So that's spread out everybody playing, you know, different, you know, Arathi Basin, Warsong Gulch. Slow me down if I'm confusing anybody. But if you put that <laughs> if you put that into Smite and say, okay, I want a random Smite match, you can be put in assault. 3v3, Conquest, whatever, will give you extra favor, and that allows them to balance out the people that are queuing up for certain roles. So I think, yeah. I don't know, man, we might be onto something. I might put in my application tomorrow for high res. That's I'm right. Just you know, they, they just, that's right. They just got to start giving us, you know. said this while they were in beta. Yeah, right, right. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I think there's a lot, a lot, um, you know, that can be implemented and added to the game, and there's no rush for sure, without a doubt, yeah. for high res, but I think this is definitely an option for them moving forward. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Well, good deal. Well, thanks for calling in, man. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. All right, you it's have a good pleasure. night. You too, man. Thanks. All righty, man. We got some good ideas going on here. Let's just start taking notes. Who's in chat from high res? I think Josh is still in chat. Josh, Nabil, Todd, Fish, Chris is in chat. All right, we're good to go. We're good to go, Chris. We'll say the ideas, man. We'll say the ideas. So, uh, moving on, um, you know, our next subject here, and uh, it looks like our next person will be YOLO, YOLO123. Uh, we'll pull you in. I love this guy. That's right. Alrighty. We'll pull you in in just a minute. Uh, our next topic we're going to talk about is the current growing pace of Smite. You can also call in and talk about, if you're interested, the university now offering League of Legends scholarships, maybe the balance of the game, maybe the latest god or patch, or if you have a new subject, you know, feel free to go ahead and call in and, and we'll definitely uh, you know, get you on the show. We have a lot of people, which is awesome, uh, a lot of people hanging out in the lobby right now. It looks like uh, quite a bit, actually, which is cool. We're happy to see people starting to pick up the pace. It only takes one person like Hindu to call in. and You got 12 people waiting, and you got one guy on deck. So looking good so far, FG. Looking good, man. Love it. So uh, let's go ahead and bring in our next caller here. YOLO, YOLO, one, two, three. How's it going? Can you hear us? Are you hitting F2 in the bottom right-hand corner? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he walked away. Oh my God, these names! <laughs> <laughs> so he's hitting his mic, but I don't, I don't think he's talking. So maybe he Can doesn't. You see me? Yay! There you are. How's it going, man? Welcome to Smite Talk. Thanks for having me. So uh, I, I wanted to. Just... Oh, what, do you, what do you want to talk about? Uh, I'm thinking with this new cylinders, they're not that big, but I think it's going to make it easier for gods like Loki to assassinate her, which will affect her viability i guess uh who is the god you said that'll affect so uh, oh the cylinder with, um, with her sickum and stuff like that yeah and the um probably the cast time the travel time yeah mm. yeah so i guess if, if no one no one's played Scylla, i don't know why you haven't but Scylla <laughs> had the amazing ability if a, a melee character jumped on top of her all she would do is just crush right at her feet pop it it's going to crit for a billion damage and kill them instantly so now at least people will have a, a chance to react to that crush mm -hmm. um I, you know maybe loki would probably be a nice beneficiary to that um mm -hmm. who else really not a lot of people because even though Scylla and I, you and F that were talking about this earlier about Scylla being this she's supposed to be this glass cannon like she's a yep. nuker she's supposed to be able to 100 <laughs> to zero to you but 
Scylla has a very reliable escape. She has CC immunity on her ult. She, I, I don't know if she should have that much damage, considering that she can just get out of anything. But different topic, different place. Um, I think Scylla is still going to be very powerful. I don't think that root was enough. It's still going to root you forever. It's still going to root two of your teammates next to you. So you can just throw it in the vicinity of a team fight. Like, you don't even have to aim it. Just throw it. There could be, like, a if there's an archer minion right there, hit the archer minion, and your teammates get rooted, or your enemies get rooted. So... I think a little bit more needs to be done to Scylla. I think she's still going to be first pick, first ban material. Oh, yeah, certainly. The damage is just ridiculous, especially late game, when you're getting 80 extra magical power. Uh, yeah, her passive is so good! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think the adjustments that high res um, is making this current patch coming up here uh, is perfect for Scylla. And some people may argue, but I feel like they're beating around the problem. Like, the underlining problem with Scylla... And, and high res has done this in the past where they're like, okay, we need to make an adjustment to Scylla. Well, let's not make the adjustment to the very underlining issue. Like, as you said, her ultimate or her easy disengagement and stuff like that. Let's make the, let's make the adjustment kind of the other abilities to see if it'll balance it out. Now, granted, it's kind of a smart move as well. But from our view, we're like, oh my gosh, like, here's where we feel the issues are. You're not applying the, the issues directly to the problem. You're just going it around the problem. So, I, you know, I've seen this in other gods before uh, where we looked at, like, Ulder and we were like, oh, my gosh, nerf his stun. His stun is astronomically long. Well, they nerfed a few other things before they finally went and nerfed the stun duration. So it's kind of another example of that with Scylla. Um, I think we'll see a few, you know, after this adjustment, I think we'll start to see a few more coming in the next few weeks for her. So we'll see. What Still else? awesome character. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Scylla is, Scylla is so much fun to play. Not one of my underlining gods where I'm not a go-to god for me, but I still feel Scylla is really good. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? YOLO, YOLO? Oh, yeah. Um, in casuals, I'm a, I am play a lot of ranked, and in casuals, I often find it very easy. And I'm wondering how they do casual ELO, because I just... Stomp. To be honest, me and you have the same problems. Dude. I just <laughs> I don't know I don't know how to handle it. It's awful. <laughs> um, I mean, how long have you been playing Smite though? Uh, like a year and two months now. Yeah, I think that's pretty. I think that's fine. I mean, you've been playing a game for a year and it's been changed. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to be better than most people that are like just now getting to level thirty. You know, there is. It's a big difference between like a fresh level 30 and then a two year level 30. You know what I mean? Even though we're both level 30, the skill ceiling is just so different. Yeah. Um, in casuals, I don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And, and, and like I said before, a lot of times in casuals, people are trying things for the first time. I was like messing around with Blink Fenrir. I've never played Fenrir before. I saw Zendur playing and I was like, I'm gonna do Blink Fenrir. Yeah. And I was doing pretty awful at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But give me new one and let's talk about it then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it's fine. If you stomp in castles, that's why they call it pub stomping, right? So I, I don't think yeah. it's really, I don't think it's bad at I all. I don't know. I don't know the, like the true math behind how they match make in, ca in casuals and, and how that's all worked out. Um, and if that's reset at any point, like, you know, we, we hear, oh, you know, like they talk about like the seasons with rank now and, and when it's going to be reset and stuff like that. I don't know about the casuals. Uh, and, uh, you know, high res is very transparent about a lot of things, but, you know, they're they're starting to keep the MMR and the um, rankings and stuff like that with ranked very close to their chest, uh, especially with casuals now as well. Like you're not really, you know, they got rid of your, your ELO rating on their website. So they're starting to keep some things close to their chest and now granted other things they're very transparent about, but uh, I'd like to see some of the math behind that and how they go ahead and determine what it is. You know, how, how do they determine casual? Because I know it's a lot more lenient than ranked, but how lenient? Because it sounds like you're running into a lot of issues just as you talked about. Like, hey, I'm running into a lot of problems where like I'm playing with people and doing exceptionally well. And uh, so yeah, well, hopefully we'll hopefully we'll learn more about that. I think it's a good thing that you brought up there. I think it would be a little better if they sort of took ranked ELO into account when matching in casual. Mm -hmm. Would they just give you an underlining elo then? Like what you like they'd give you the underlying elo that you start out with in ranked then, if they kept that in mind? Because for people that don't play ranked at all, you know, you couldn't just have zero and like destroy it. You know what I mean? Like have them super low. You can have somebody that has more 
conquest games casual than um a lot of other players you know that are even in ranked so i mean i can understand what you're saying for sure i mean it could it could go it could go either way i guess is the way i see it you know yeah well good deal well yolo yolo one two three thank you thank you very much for coming on i appreciate it man okay you have a good night Good deal, good deal. Guys, we'll continue to take any questions here. Before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the current growing pace of Smite. You put this on the topics there, FG. So let's talk about it. What do you got? The overall growing pace of Smite. Huh. That's that's a good topic. I like that. Who put that there? Who put that <laughs> so, there? So when did Smite come out? Smite came out in, like, the actual launch. Was it Mar? What? It was... Mar? A? What was it? It was in 2012, um, and I... Think... No, no, I mean the actual oh, launch, the actual... like the official launch launch. I don't. I didn't start playing till. Hmm. I started playing like five months after it came out. I remember that, but I don't remember what that date is. Somebody in chat's going to tell us, and I appreciate no. it. Somebody else well, I'm it. talking about the actual, like, the official We Are Release game. Oh, we are re- oh that, yeah, 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 that was March. That one. March 26th, I think, 2014. March 26th. Yeah, because the, March tor- 26th. because the tournament was that upcoming weekend. I think it was the 27th and 8th. So I, if you're talking about that, then yeah. So it's been out for four months, March basically, 25th. when, when you kind of think about it. There we go. All right, so it's been out for about four months. All right. Um, I think it's growing at a pretty steady tick. I don't know. I think a lot of people expected it to just explode and be like right next to League of Legends and Dota 2 on Twitch, like the most viewed game ever. Here comes Smite. It's steadily been ticking up. I watch Twitch numbers probably just as much as you do, Octane. We're always yep. looking, at, looking at Twitch yep. numbers. It's been steadily ticking up, and I think this is the, I, I, I pretty much predicted this. I didn't think it was going to just explode out of nowhere. Um, this time next year, we'll probably see maybe smite is on that first row but even then if it gets to about a steady nine to ten thousand i think that's on the right path right i don't think that we're, we'll ever see a game like smite just explode because it's a brand new ip it's completely different than all the other mobas yep. um that's a good thing and it's a bad thing right it's a good thing it gets these people that are kind of tired of league and are yeah tired of dota 2 but those people that aren't tired of dota 2 and aren't tired of league they're not even looking at smite Right, so yep. it, it makes sense as far as the growing pace. I think it's kind of on par, and I think Smite is doing a lot of work on Siege right now, which is very curious. Um, they're redoing, they're updating the graphics, and you know, tweaking the numbers four v four, five v five. I think that you you will see a new soft launch to Smite again, like when the cinematic when that cinematic is finished, yeah. and once they're done tweaking Siege, they're going to relaunch Smite again. Um, and then I think then we'll kind of see a little another boost in um, in numbers as far as players and Twitch numbers and all that. Octane, what do you think? Um, I know I could definitely agree with you. I think you know you have to remember that Smite, even even in the closed beta, did not was not like the underlining. You know, came about in the MOBA scene very late. You have to remember. Um, you know, there were, yeah. there were of course MOBAs before Dota 2 and MOBAs before, you know, League of Legends, but those of course are the most well-known ones. And you have to remember like those two games hit the MOBA scene and almost developed the MOBA scene independently on their own. So when MOBAs were the highest that they ever have been was during the, a, you know, with Dota 2 and with League of Legends. Um, high res definitely went ahead and you know used the popularity of MOBAs and started to develop Smite in closed beta, and hence why Smite has done so good. You know, it's gone ahead. Smite has very much taken the PvP aspect of one of the largest games ever, World of Warcraft, and taken the PvP aspect of that and merged it with one of the most dominating genres right now in video games, which is MOBAs. And they created a product, which is Smite. And you know, they they've done very well with it, but you have to remember, like Dota 2 and League of Legends are the the forefront of MOBAs. Now, you know, Smite is very much a, a third person, um, you know, over over the shoulder style MOBA game that is different. And I think that's why it does so well that when you talk to people, they're like, oh, yeah, this is pretty cool. You know, I used to play WoW. I really like this. Or you get, oh, I used to play Dota, got burned out with it. Or, oh, I played League of Legends, got burned down with it. This is perfect. Um, so it's hitting those markets there. I, I've not run into a person where it's like, oh, I used to play Call of Duty, now I'm playing Smite. I'm not seeing the, <laughs> sure. I'm not seeing those types of players. Now, granted, there's probably a handful of those out there, without a doubt, but I'm not seeing those players out there. And I think people have to remember, 
you know, being the third largest MOBA in the world is pretty good when you're behind League of Legends and then behind Dota when their population player base is in the millions. Now, granted, high res is still up there. I mean, your accounts, I think, was like three million, three and a half million at one point um, when the game launched back in March. But you're talking about like 10, 20, 30 million, give or take, you know, for your League of Legends and Dota players. And astronomical, you know, remember. you know, yeah. And so I think the pace is is right at where it should be when you're competing with these giants, you know, without a doubt. I mean, that you know, it's where it should be. I, I, you're not going to see League of Legends go ahead and go anywhere or Dota 2 go anywhere anytime soon. So um, I think for sure that's kind of, you know, where where it's at. I think the pace is only going to increase because as time goes on, people are only going to get burned out by League of Legends or only by Dota 2 or, you know, uh, same thing with WoW. Get get turned off by WoW's PvP aspect or or by the the raid aspect and want to move on to something different. So uh, just my thoughts there. I agree. I agree. I'm a little scared for this next caller. I'm just going <laughs> to throw that out there. All right. <laughs> let's call let's call this person T M S W L. That's going to be your name. Trust <laughs> trust me, she was illegal. How's it going? Welcome to Smite Talk. Um, thank you for having me. So, what do you want to talk about today? Yeah. Wow. That's the unfortunate part about a live show. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a great song. That probably was really probably good. like his cell phone ring too. But just in case he was trolling me, I kicked him off. <laughs> it's okay. I had, On to the next caller. I, I had somebody call in and play. What does the fox say? Like the week it was popular. So and play. Did you that just let song. it play out. Yep. Did you just let it play out? I played it. I played it. I let it play out for like ten seconds, and then I was like, "Okay, thank you." Uh, so let's bring in our next caller here. Welcome to the show, Straff Tra Strafton. Strafton, is that pronounced yep. correctly? Hey, welcome to the show, man. Yes, sir. How you doing? Good. So, what do you want to talk about Here today? Well, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. You know, it's good that we just transitioned into the growth of the game because I'm actually trying it out for the first time. Uh, I haven't tried it out yet but I'm bringing my MOBA circle of gamers into try it as well. Uh, you know, what appealed to us about it was um, you were talking how it's sort of like a hybrid between other MOBAs with the WoW style yep. over the shoulder camera. And uh, a lot of my friends were big into WoW and raiding. And, uh, you know, I think it's a nice graphical change up as well, um, in my thinking anyways. So with that said, my question is, uh, what else differentiates Smite from other MOBAs like League of Legends and Dota? Sure. Great question. So first off, you know, not only is it that point of view, uh, you also have your skill shots based, you know, of a game where you're not clicking on the enemy neath and then just hitting one and it automatically targets and fires. That's another big factor about Smite, which, you know, I am definitely one that says, you know, oh, it's harder. It makes the aspect harder than other games. And people would definitely argue against that. And, you know, I don't need to get in it for sure, but I, I feel like that skill shot is another thing. On top of that, it is the game modes as well. Smite has a phenomenal amount of game modes that are available that are quite different with your arenas, your assaults, your one versus one, your three versus three, your domination at one point, your games of the day. That's what really makes it a big difference. What about you, FG? What, 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 anything else you could think of or reiterate on? Um, I like the fact that the skill ceiling is as high as you want it to be. And I know my, I might get some flack for some people that play League of Legends or whatever, but if you take the top League of Legends ADCs, they're all pretty much fundamentally the same because they don't really have to aim anything. You, once you play League of Legends so much, you get to the point where you're going to hit what you need to hit. Most of the ADCs that play League of Legends are they're at the top and they're right there. Mm -hmm. You compare that to Smite, compare all the hunters in Smite right now. Like, who is the best hunter? It's so wildly different because Barracuda might be, oh, this is the guy that's always going to nail his auto attacks as Barracuda, or Zapman's going to be the person that always makes big plays. It's so big, or Shaggy Shake is going to be the guy that's going to chase you down with Artemis. <laughs> but their skill levels are so different. Like, they are very, very different players. And I don't think you see a lot of that in, in League of Legends, just because at the end of the day, you can kind of pretty much hit anything. Like, I can hit abilities in League of Legends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so to kind of wrap that up, because um, like I said, we haven't played it yet. Um, so there aren't any targeted abilities. It's a lot more skill shot based. There are. The not, well, there are. There, there are, are some. There are, there are a few, but a majority, I'd say 99% of your skill abilities are 
all comes down skill based. So for example, you'd like to go ahead and, um, you know, you could go ahead and click on a God. It's not going to do you anything, but what you could do is for example, like, let's say you want to go ahead and you want to send out a spirit arrow of Neath, which can go ahead and stun your opponent. You have to go ahead and look at your opponent, look at the path they're running and fire in front of Neath so that it hits Neath at the exact timing to stun her. Right. So, so you gotta lead your target a bit. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now with AOE abilities, you can go ahead and select a ground. You know, it shows you. The nice thing is there's different casting modes with Smite. So if you have a ground targeter to show where this AOE launch of a bot, they're you know, kind of from WoW. You know, you're gonna go ahead and AOE an area with a rain of arrows or or, or a meteor or whatever. You know, you can select that area. You can see where it's going to land, and then you can click the one ability, and it will go ahead and fire it to that ability. More recently, over the past several months, they've gone ahead and allowed you to, like, put that half and half in, like, the jungle and half and half, like, overlapping into the lane. So, like, you right. you might not be able to see it, but you can fire it over a wall into an area as long as there's ground there. So, but yet, then on the other side, let's talk about, like, Neath has an ultimate where she can go ahead and when she's popping her ultimate, she can see through all the walls in the game. As long as she can have vision of that enemy god, she can click on that, select that god, it auto-targets onto it, and then she clicks the fourth ability, which is always your ultimate on a god, and it automatically will go ahead and guide itself to that god and hit that god. That is one of the ultimates, but it's not something that's super common. Is there any other gods right. you can think about, FG, where it auto-targets like that? Um, I guess you can kind of say Nemesis, but not really. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not it's not but something they dwell on. You know, that's really interesting. I like I like that that's a lot different. Um, if I can finish this off with one more question. Sure, Since we're just getting into it, and we do have a lot of experience with World of Warcraft and other MOBAs, don't necessarily need, like, noob-friendly champions, but maybe some champions with a little bit of outplay mechanics, but also a little bit on the forgiving side of the meta that maybe would be good for us to purchase, you know, as a first kind of startup. This is the great thing about Smite. We were talking about this earlier. Almost every god in the game is there. I don't want There's no such thing as a noob god in, in yeah. Smite. I feel like, right. You can like, I guess people might argue and say, uh, Al Kuang, who is uh, a mid, a mid mage. You can kind of say he's noob friendly, but my advice to you is to pick a first of all pick your role right so do you want to be a hunter do you want to be the person that has to nail all your auto attacks do you want to be a jungler do you want to be over there in solo island by yourself find out what role that you want to play first and then just pick a god whose kit that you like the most because i'll tell you right now you can pretty much be exceptional at any god in the game right i like to play bonasura nice. solo i like nija solo right people don't play nija solo and most people might not be good at it, but if you put in the time and the effort in it, you can be exceptional at almost any god and almost any role in this game. So I just say pick someone you like, stick with it, and just learn how to play. Anubis. People used to, like, blink jungle Anubis? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking Greek to you right now, but it's like That's things right. like I'll, that I'll that you can find out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's just yeah. I mean, you, you I will think... find out that you, you'll pick a god and get real good at it. You know, and that actually sounds like something also unique to this game that, uh, like I said, the only thing that attracted me was that it sort of looked like a combination between the WoW combat style and a MOBA. But you know, a lot of the things you guys are saying is getting the hype train choo-choo in here. Uh, yeah. I really like I really like that you're saying any champion can be viable in competitive play. So that oh, sounds yeah. Yeah. pretty awesome. No, it absolutely yeah. can. I mean, the, big, that we... the big thing is, too, like as you're leveling through Smite 1 to 30, um, you will notice you'll run into some players that are like, I only play Ra. Ra's the only god I play. But what I can recommend for you is, you know, find a god you like in a role you like, which is great, but then don't limit yourself. Like, you want to play Ra as solo lane, great, but then you also like other mages like Al Quang. You know, try to play as much versatility as you can because here's the one recommended recommendation I can play. Try to play every god at least once so you know what they do. So when you're laning against them or playing against them, you know what to expect. You know, okay, this god has a stun. I need to watch. Yeah. I need to watch out for that because it's very common where you find a god, a person who is like, I play Neath. Neath's the only god I play, and then all of a sudden they hit thirty, and you're opened up to all these doors, and it's like, don't play just one god. You're level thirty now. Like you've reached the, you've reached that max level. Like you should know how to play every god. You should, you know, it's so much more helpful. Yeah, and it makes it less frustrating that when you get into a game and someone else has picked your god before you. If you're going just conquest or casual, you know, all of a sudden you don't know how to, you don't know who to play because someone's picked your God before. So 
Uh, you know, that, that would definitely be my rec How many people are you playing with? Like, including yourself? Uh, you know, I got about five buddies who play a lot, a lot. And then I've got more who, you know, play now and then. So okay. anywhere from five to ten, probably. Okay. Whoa, I only have five or ten friends in life. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well here, here's what I will do. I will send you five 200 gem codes and you can give each... What? You can give each of your friends a gem code. Now, granted, they can only activate a gem code once, so you can't hog them off for yourself because it'll all, you can only <laughs> activate a 200 gem code once. But here's five 200 gem codes. Go ahead, give each of your new friends who's playing the game a gem code, and have some Sweet. fun with. And, ha and after you play a few of the gods, go ahead then and buy the god that you like the most, or go ahead and buy the skin on that god. Uh, but yeah, yeah, enjoy, man. Well, and, uh, uh, thank you so much. That's really awesome of you guys, and thanks for having me on the show. No problem. Yeah, absolutely. You have a good night. You too, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> buy a skin and a voice pack. It makes you better at the game. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you can spam it. Ding, 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 ding. That's like the uh, USA one. You can just spam that, right? <laughs> oh god I'm not looking forward to that and i am at the same time <laughs> that's right that's right for sure for sure so uh you know let's go ahead here we uh maybe we do some rapid fire ones you know sure like one question per person there's a sure a sure so we'll, we'll bring in rtba here in a second um and uh see what his thoughts are here so rtba welcome to smite talk sir or ma'am what would you like to talk about Yes, no, maybe so. Hit that button. F2, F2 if you have push to talk on, like my friend FG3000. I like push to talk. All right, you're out, bro. You're out. You've been moved on. Be ready, people. You be ready, without a doubt. So what we'll do, you know, we have a little bit of time left here. Uh, we'll go ahead and round it out. Um, go ahead, you know, go ahead, people. Post some questions in chat, in the Twitch chat. And we'll go ahead and just take some questions right off the back. They don't have to be long and lengthy. Just quick questions. Go ahead and post them in the Twitch chat. Um, you know, we'll go ahead and do that here. Let's. But while we wait, let's go ahead and take in uh, Mikkel. Mikkel, welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? What do you want to talk about? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. F2, push the talk. F2, push I know, the talk. I, I know. have faith in you. It, the, the default is F2, folks. With Raid Call, the default is F2. Oh, can you guys hear me? Hey, there you are. Yes. What's going on, man? Hey, sorry about that. So what um, do you want to talk about? My friends, they play Smite and a bunch of other games with me. Okay. But they're new. Okay. And I've been level 30 for quite a while. And whenever I play with them on my level 30, they get stomped. And it's not enjoyable for them at all. Yep. How do you guys feel about smurfing? I think my personal opinion completely hmm. completely okay um, if you just want to play with your friends and you're running into that situation. The problem is though is then all of a sudden you start destroying people at the lower levels and then it's not as fun for them. So it's kind exactly. of it's kind of my best recommendation would be if you're going to play with your friends, play like assault or play like arena and less conquest because then you're not the snowball effect i feel like is not going to be so so um you know evident without a doubt but that's just my thought what do you think fg you're, you're definitely pondering it i see you over there i see you pondering <laughs> it. um i mean you can play support and conquest too right i mean if you play support <laughs> and conquest you'll be fine i don't think you'll snowball too much you can actually be there and watch yep. your friends play i don't know if that's something you'd want to do but um support would be fine to smurf a, a support account yeah yeah. I mean, is that, I mean, what do you guys end up playing the most? Is, is it Conquest? Yeah, it's either usually Conquest or Arena. He doesn't really like Assault because he doesn't have the God Pack and he uh, gets all the shitty ones that he doesn't, mm. he's not good with. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, it, it's rough because you've been playing the game for so long. I completely understand. And, and those people are not familiar. Like, it tries, let's say he plays with like two other people and they're super low ELO. It tries to take the nice little average between their, their ELO ratings and his ELO rating and, and applies it. But then the downside is, you know, they could get stomped on or he could do super well versus those people. So, um, I mean, there isn't really a great solution, except, I mean, only thing I can think of is like Arena. Like, when I join, now some people might get angry at me here, but when I join Arena, I'm in it for just like, you know, just to have some fun, just to play around, you know, whatever. Or same thing with Assault, just because it's such randomized gods. So, I mean, that's probably your best bet. I mean, you know, playing with a Smurf is fine, but then what happens is then you go 20 and 2. 
And then the lower level players are not as happy about it because then they're like, wow, this matchmaking system's horrible. I just went ahead and yeah. played and I played against this guy and destroyed. And it's like, wow, like it's a double-edged sword. What does high res do? Like they want you to be able to play with your friends. But yet when you go ahead and play with your friends, then you run into a problem where you destroy everyone else because you're playing on a Smurf account. So it's, there isn't a great solution for it, unfortunately. The only thing I can say is maybe the alternative game modes. Hopefully that answers your question yeah okay well thanks for coming on man i appreciate it you have a good night the only person with a real name thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right let's go ahead and take our call here from toxic mage in just a minute uh feel free to call in about anything you guys want to talk about um why don't you go ahead and take why don't you pick a question from chat here fg we got a few questions new walk can do everything new walk <laughs> can play support new walk can be an adc new walk can mid new walk can jungle new walk can solo new walk can do everything so yes, that was one of the questions. What was the <laughs> What was the question? Was it what can what can what uh... what roles can you all? It was it was it was like what roles can you all play? She's she's actually fantastic at support. Um, she can use her fog to get away and slow down chase. She can stun with her three pillars yeah. of heaven is always off of cooldown. Yeah. Um, obviously you can transition all that as an ADC with demonic grip. Um, you can throw her in mid because obviously she's a maid solo getting a tower down in under ten minutes. And jungle, she can actually jungle pretty well if you if you're really good at uh, nailing your flame strike. And if not, pillars of heaven. Once again, it's always off of cooldown. So, Nuwa, all rolls. I think this man likes Nuwa, but I can't really tell, folks. Like, tell me in chat, do you think he likes Nuwa? Oh my word, he'd be wearing a Nuwa. I love Nuwa shirt, you know. Jeez. I will go to your store and purchase one. <laughs> I know, right? It's all you, bro. And then you can you can add lettering for like a few bucks more that says I love Nuwa. You'd be set, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> are you selling me right now that's right I am. are you are you buying me are you buying me all right let's go ahead and bring in toxic mage because it's working toxic mage welcome toxic to smite mage. talk what do you want to talk about tonight hello hello what do you want to talk about yo yo uh, uh my thing was uh the ranked people like in league of legends people would pay others to go on their account and play and I think that's what people are doing in straight because in like platinum one or two or stuff like that people just suck so much <laughs> well I will have to say um very evident you know last show smite update we were talking with fats and fats was like I got into a game with lasses I was in bronze and I we won the game because of lasses and then he was promoted to platinum not saying that he is a horrible player by all means, you know, Fats is pretty decent at the game without a doubt, much better than I am actually. But um, that happens like that happens where you are almost not not someone is playing on your account, but just the fact that, you know, they right now the the MMR system, the matchmaking system is a little I'll just say goofy right now and could use some polishing. So I can you know, you're going to run into some players that aren't very good that are in gold or platinum or you know, maybe even diamond for some odd reason. Do I think people are playing on, uh, you know, other accounts? I don't know. What do you think, FG? I mean, you're not really seeing, I'm not seeing a system like Blizzard has where like it figures out what IP address you're playing on the most. And then when it sees a problem, it, it does or doesn't allow it and stuff like that. Like, what do you think? Yeah. I, I, from my MMO experience, I know like there is, there are people out there that'll PVP your account all the way up and get you all the gear. I, I don't know if that's actually happening in smite I, obviously you can't me and you we won't be able to know like yeah. if it's happening right now some really really pro player is helping his friend but at the end of the day then what now you're in platinum and now yeah. you get your account back, then what do you do like I, it's not like in world of warcraft you have all this gear you can sit in ogre mar and be like what and smite <laughs> you're you're just gonna when the next season comes you're just gonna lose your rank so i i don't i don't know if that's happening at, at all yeah yeah i mean i'm not really sure um, you know, if there, if there's a great way, you know, uh, in order to look at it, I mean, as the patch said, you know, they're adding in some security question, uh, into, um, you know, within smite that you can go ahead and do. So, you know, you can have that in there for a layer of security, but you know, you're not really saying there's a hacking issue and people are getting into your account. Um, you know, what you were talking about for sure was the fact of, you know, people leveling for someone else. And at this point, I don't really know of anything within smite to combat in that. Um, I don't know. You know how exactly that would work i mean i guess it's there but it's like let's say somebody leveled you know i gave my someone my account info and they leveled it up to masters like if i gave wolfie my account info what does that do for me because moving forward like 
I'll just jump into a game and completely destroy that ELO and it'll be right back down to where it should be. So I don't think there's like, until there's a huge reward right now for being up in masters or diamond, like, Hey, you now have this ability and stuff like that. Um, I don't, I don't know that it's there. Like, I don't know that there's a demand, but once they start rewarding people at that level, like, Hey, you've reached masters. Here's 10,000 gems. I don't think it'll, you know what I mean? I don't hmm. think it'll be there. But, <laughs> yeah. But what do, you, we what, might have a what, do you, what do you think? Toxic, <laughs> what do you think toxic mage? I mean, uh, do you think it's there? Like, do you think it's actually a problem right now? Oh uh, yeah, I actually do believe it. Cause there's people on platinum that just suck. I'm not sure if it's like the thing you were saying before fats getting into a game yeah. with last hits. Yeah. Yep. Cause that's just crazy, but I'm just thinking that cause people in league always did that before. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I can completely understand it. Like from that league perspective. Now I don't play league of legends. Is there some type of benefit for being leveled up to that point and ranked? Like, does it, what does it, what does it do for you as a player when you're that super high? Is there a reward system for that or no? You're just, just like with smite. How's that, how's that work in league of legends? Whoa, it's like, uh, I didn't really get to that level. Like okay. my friends told me about it, but it just like gives you fame. So when you click on that leaderboard system, you're like, oh, Toxic Mage all the way up there. He must be good. But when you get into that match with him, you realize that he sucks. So you realize that someone must have been putting on his account. I feel like it's like, like that in Smite because every now and then I look at Masters, I'm like, wow, these people – must be really good. Hmm. I mean, I don't, I think, I think it's a good point. Like once we start to see the ladder system kind of publicly displayed, like when you get in a game, it's like kind of one of those rotating, you know, images, you know, scenes that come up, one of them being maybe like the top 10 ladder rankings and stuff like that. And maybe there's going to be a little demand, like kind of what you talked about, but I don't know how much, I don't know. I don't know how much we're going to see that right now. Would you agree FG? Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Okay. Well, Toxic Mage, thanks for coming on. Good question, man. You have a good night. All right. Thanks. Bye. Later. All right, guys. Um, we're going to take uh, one or H Man Play Smite. Yeah, we're we'll bringing him in right now. So, uh, H Man Play Smite. Welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going, sir? Ma'am, you there? Um. Hey, welcome. We can hear you. So, what, what do you want to talk about today? You still with us? Maybe turn off, mute the stream, hit the F2 key or whatever key you hit. We heard you for a quick second. Womp womp. <laughs> killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. All right, moving on, moving on. So we'll take one or two more callers here. We'll round out the show. It's supposed to be a 45 hour minute show. And look what you've done, FG. There's enough. Wait, how long have we been on? Uh, we started at eight. <laughs> it's now an hour and 45 minutes later. Know. Yeah, that's right. Tons of time. That's right. That's right. I could go. I could go all night. The sad part is, I'm done on Smite game at ten. So unfortunately, but how would you pronounce this guy's name? Yes, sir. Real? Yes, sir. Real? Well, it's Yes, Sarah. All right. I know who Yes, Sarah is. Let's go ahead and bring in Yes, <laughs> Sarah. I'm cutting you off at one question. You get one question, Yes, Sarah. Okay, I'm sorry. Hello. It's first of all, it's an honor to be here. Hello. My question was is oh, Zapman right. earlier this week yep. said that each god um is like good if the player knows what he's doing. But there are obviously better god picks. So sure. like what's your opinion on that statement? Mm -hmm. No, without a doubt. Um uh, FG, I'll let you take it first. It's a fantastic question. Hey, Sarah, thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yes, but at the same time, it, it's not in a vacuum, right? None, nobody's in a vacuum. So if you somehow came across a player who had the same exact skill level as you, and you picked a lesser guy and he picked a better guy, then yes, he's going to beat you. But you're just never really in a vacuum like that. You're never going to get someone that has the same exact skill as you. So... I, I don't know. I think, I think like Shiblanke in the long lane, he's pretty much regarded as probably the worst hunter over there because of his clear. But that doesn't mean that you can't outplay 99% of the hunters that you'll go against. So it's true, and then it's not true, if that is any type of answer to you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I would have to agree. I mean, uh, looking at some of these players, like some of the competitive players that have been in the scene for quite some time, long enough to the point where like they're playing gods every day, inside and out, playing the game at eight to 10 hours a day. I feel like you could put any god in their hands and they're good with them. Hence why at a competitive level, you sometimes do see shifts where people can go ahead and, you know, um, you know, so-and-so, you know, Lassus and Zapman can swap roles all of a sudden to see, you know, how it works out. And they still do phenomenally well, better than your average Joe. Um, I, I feel like they they understand the game at a level that we and a play at that we are currently not at. You know, every, at the everyday person that's not playing it 10 hours a day for two years, per se. Um, so I feel, yes, that players that are at a competitive level, I feel at least, and some players that are not even competitive, some people that just play ranked or whatever, can play any god good, without a doubt. Like, I, I feel it's definitely the case. Um, you know, I, I don't feel that, you know, certain gods just can't be good i disagree i mean you can have a player jump on who knows the game so well jump on an arachne and be phenomenal at arachne in conquest it all depends on who they're mm. going against it all depends on who they're going against if you're going to take an arachne true, true. if you're going to take you know a jungler like lassus whatever put him on arachne at a competitive level it's not going to do as good it's not because he's not super good at the god he could be very good at the god the downside is is how you know arachne applies within the current meta so just my thoughts there on any god being good. Yeah. Well, Lass has kind of proved it with Loki, right? Like, yep. Loki out of nowhere. Loki was regarded probably the worst jungler in the game, and all of a sudden, he's in a tournament and someone bans Loki for him. You know what I mean? That's crazy. <laughs> Same thing with Aphrodite. Thank you for and having me. You're right. I knew you were going to end with that. I knew you were going to end with that. Let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> Aphrodite. Aphrodite had no changes for the most part. Like Aphrodite's been the same Aphrodite for years, right? And all of a sudden, Aphrodite, you must have her. Put her in the solo lane. First pick, first ban. So just people just have to kind of think outside the box and kind of play these gods. And I think everybody is viable. I know people kind of poop on Arachne. Maybe she is better than we think she is. I don't think she is, but maybe. <laughs> I could say the same about Nuwa. Anyway. Whoa! Cut, her, cut him off. Cut him off. Next call. <laughs> cut him off. Cut him off. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Congratulations, FG and um, Octane Pro. Continue to do what you're doing. You're doing something great. Thanks, Bye. man. Appreciate it. I will hug you in real life. I don't know. FG, what are we congratulating him on, by the way? He's like, congratulations, FG. What are you, huh? What are you congratulating on, man? I don't understand. Because uh, I'm hanging out with you. Oh, so oh. I get to hang out with you now. It's great. I appreciate it. That's <laughs> all. Right now we have Ezra710. Ezra710, welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? Hello, hello, hello. F2 is... I'm here. Hey, I'm here. there we go. Listen to that deep voice. How's it going? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me, gentlemen. So, I watch both of you. FG, I'm always trolling you on uh, your YouTube <laughs> channel, talking about Arena. And, uh, oh, Mr. About Arena, it. man. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So what do you want to talk about? Well, well I'm, I'm, number one, I love Arena. I only play Arena. I don't do Conquest or you. anything else. You. However, and I'm, and, you know, just as I was getting up there, they took Arena League away, but that's another topic. Yep. But what I'm thinking of is, you know, watching FG, I've seen his Siege um, videos. Okay. So he's kind of sort of making me think that maybe I might want to try some Siege. Yeah, buddy. Now, being, being an Arena-only player, that's all I queue up for. I tried Conquest. I just plain don't like it. Okay, that's fine. But what what advice going from Arena into Siege that would help me try it out and not get into the players who've been playing it since it's been out and the players who play Conquest all the time and the BM and everything else? I will take it first because I'll be short and sweet and fun with it. And then I'll let FG take it. Imagine, and now people in chat are going to like laugh at me. Imagine Siege as arena with a bunch of crap in the way. That's all it is. Like go into, go into, <laughs> go into it, go into it with your, with your, with your high burst gods, you know, 
which which of course makes sense with assault too. Now, granted, or, or I'm sorry, with arena, like with arena, you know, sometimes you know, without a doubt, you have situations where it's just a bunch of like burst gods. You know, people just pick whoever, and you go into it, and you have some fun with arena. That's what I feel like with siege. Like I feel like with siege, when you jump into it, like you're ready to have some fun. But I also feel with siege, it's a great introduction to conquest, and not because I don't want to scare you away. It's a great introduction to the tower mechanic, and a great introduction. Um, to the jungling mechanic a little bit. And so I think it's perfect. Like, I think it's perfect for someone like you. And I don't know, I don't know if Hyrus developed it to kind of be a move for people that play Arena and Assault and move them on to something like Siege. But I feel like Siege is the perfect stepping stone for players like yourself. Because I played with players the other day who literally, like, they still, which is okay, they're new players. They still do the auto buy. They still do the auto level. They're very new to the game. And they always, they love Arena, just like you. They love it. Just, combat, you know, a big battle of the gods. Go for it. Have fun. And they wanted to try Siege, but they weren't sure about it. And, you know, I just said, hey, go into Siege, have fun with it. It's going to be a little different. You know, you are going to have jungle camps where you do have that with Arena. So that applies there. You do have minions. Um, so you, you will have that in this situation as well. You don't have towers. So that's a new mechanic to learn. But you have the jungle area, which very much could be treated just like Arena. And so for me, that's just my feelings on Siege. Like, I feel like it's a great stepping stone for you. Take your time with it. But I think you'd like Siege a lot if you like Arena. What do you think, FG? Hmm. 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 Um, I think you would have liked it more when it was five versus five. <laughs> I think that's you would have liked it a little bit more. <laughs> that, that's what I was thinking because I did play uh, two. I played four games when it was um, five v five. But you know, like I said, I've been watching your video, uh, your YouTube videos, and I've seen how you know it looks. It looks fun. You know, it just looks fun. Not as much fun as Arena, I mean, but just... a little bit more fun than, <laughs> you know, than Conquest for me. Yeah, it's not as wild as Arena. Not at all. It's definitely not as wild as Arena. And you know that I'm a new Arena player, so. I know. Thank you. The, Thank you. The issue with 4v4. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, 4v4, I mean, you are in an extended laning phase for the most part. So it's not... It's not really anything like arena anymore. So you you, you need to have a, a set lane, right? You need to have someone that can push and you need to have someone else. Like you have to have at least a mage or, or a new wall, for example. You need to have like a new wall over here and you need to have like an A over here, right? You have to have those things. So there's already a kind of a set meta. You have to have like a pusher. And for the most part, what I've seen personally, not, not, not talking about tournaments, what I've seen personally when in the casual queue, is that people don't ever leave their lane for the most part. They usually don't leave their lane until they're about level 10 or 15. <laughs> like, like they stay there, and then end game happens, and it's over like really, really quick. So I, I don't know. I mean, I'm still – I'm not that big of a fan of 4v4 Siege. I think it was a better – I think you would have loved it a lot more, 5 versus 5, because it was just kind of wild. Like people would rotate – and at the two-minute mark, you'd have somebody in your lane attacking you in a three-person lane. It was crazy. Um, 4v4, you can try it if you want to kind of get a baby step into Conquest. But if you're looking for something that's like Arena, I don't think it's like Arena anymore. Mm. Okay, and I'm, and I'm really not thinking of it as a, a terms of moving to Conquest. Just something, you know, different. just something different to sure. play. Sure, I like it. I mostly play Arena, but every so often I'm like, Eh, Siege might not be so bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not as meta-ish as uh, Conquest, for sure. Like, there's no, you gotta buy Hog, Bumbles, Red Pot, there, you gotta have, uh, <laughs> you know, all those things don't really exist as much in Siege, so yeah, it's definitely, it's a lot more friendly, I think. Yeah. Try it out, brother. You made me try Arena, you go try out Siege. That's right. Look at that. Look okay, at that call out. Okay, okay, okay. That I will do. That well, I will do. Well, I'll, awesome. I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, there you go. That'd be that'd be awesome. Well, man, thanks for going ahead and calling in. We appreciate it. Really good question. Thanks. See you next time. Thank yeah, man. Great you. hearing you finally. Thank you. So I think, folks, we're going to go ahead and round out our show for tonight, without a doubt. Uh, it was great coming back from a hiatus. Uh, show started out a little slow with Hindu Man coming on, uh, but then we had a nice, good flood of people calling in, which is great. Uh, without a doubt, it's always good to get you know people getting a little bit more comfortable calling in. Uh, those of you guys not familiar with Smite Talk, Smite Talk used to be every week, actually, after uh, the Smite update.
And so I kind of put it on a hiatus, wasn't sure what I wanted to do with Smite Talk, wasn't sure how I wanted to handle it. And the perfect solution was bringing on a co-host, um, you know, without a doubt. At one time I was bringing on guests and, um, you know, it was great with the interviews and stuff like that. But I feel like Smite Talk definitely had a different direction it could go. And having a second opinion on things constantly, the same co-host, um, you know, doing more. You know, that's what Smite Talk was originally about. Like before I started doing interviews on Smite Talk, it was just about me in front of a camera talking with people calling in. And I think that's why the show was so good. So we're going to continue doing this every week. We'll be back every Sunday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, give or take, depending if Smite Update runs a little late or a little early, without a doubt. Um, but those of you guys checking this out on iTunes, welcome back. I know you guys have probably been wondering where the show's been at. How come you haven't seen it on your feed? Um, and uh, shout out to everyone who has previously given us a five-star review on iTunes please do that goes ahead and ups the show up in the popularity on iTunes so we'll definitely be doing this so this show will be back next week uh, next Sunday on the twitch.tv slash smite game channel uh, before we go ahead and go uh, shout outs to high res studio for allowing us to go ahead and host this show on their channel thank you to everyone there at high res studios and before we go FG where can people go ahead and check you out man I don't want to post it in chat because I'll it's get slain right. by just, Mubot. Ju just say it. Just <laughs> say it. Say you it. can check me out every single day on my YouTube channel. Um, YouTube.com slash FitnessGamer3000. Don't worry about the name. Just click the link. Um, I do pretty much 99% Smite with a little bit of Wildstar mixed in. Um, yeah, I love Smite. I love Conquest. I love Arena. I love Siege a little bit. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you uh, just, just a little put bit. it out there. <laughs> that is... So, that yeah. is that is awesome. Uh, somebody said audio podcast. Yes, every the Smite update and Smite talk are both available in the audio only version on iTunes. And then also for Android users, go ahead and download an app like Beyond Pod, which is a free podcast app, and just search for Smite and you'll find Smite update in there. You'll find Smite talk in there as well. So the audio version is available. It's unbelievable. Like I got email on Smite Update. I was asking for emails from people, which we are for Smite Talk. You know, go ahead, email at smite talk at gmail.com. I got emails from all over the world of people that listen to the audio versions that enjoyed at work or enjoyed on the train or the metro, whatever they take to work. So the audio version's out there, uh, without a doubt. I mean, I go back and listen to the show's audio version on my way to work to figure out what we can critique, what we can go ahead and change. So uh, make sure you guys check it out. And myself and FG3000 will see you guys next week on twitch.tv slash smite game at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Take care, folks. Stay tuned for little Mamacita, who will be following me up. See you guys then. Little Mamacita!